If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this sexy episode oh. of Mind Curvaceous. Pump. The first 50 minutes is our introductory conversation. We talk about uh, an evil genius show on Netflix. I haven't seen it yet. Adam says it's awesome. Ooh, gotta watch Some it. Some crazy lady. Twisted. I, yeah. I talked about Blowing neurons people up. to Nirvana on Amazon Prime. That's a great one. Talks about psychedelics and their effects on the brain. Mm. We did a little Father's Day recap. We all had a good time. Yeah, shout out to the fathers out there. Uh, Justin talked about his dad date. <laughs> Went on a date with another dad. Man, we're going to go bike riding, yeah, apparently. We, we mentioned all the stress Adam has at family events. Oh, uh, it, it sounds so Poor bad. guy. We talk about former Fitbit employees uh, being indicted. I think they were Jawbone employees. And yes. And they worked at Fitbit. That's, that's yeah, was, exactly what He yeah. said that. No, Justin said that, yeah, yeah, said yeah, yeah. that the right way. Just make Doug sure wrote it wrong. Doug wrote it wrong. Doug, Doug, Doug also Doug. forgot to mention us talking about HustleCon that's coming up here. Oh, also. yeah. Mm. This Friday. Get your uh, hustle on. The 22nd. You can. We actually have a coupon code specifically for Mind Pump listeners. You will get $150 off the ticket. So this is exclusive just for you guys. Go to HustleCon.com. Enter the code Mind Pump for that massive discount. Then we talked about the, the, vi- the value of wearables. And I also mentioned Organifi turmeric. And how to get turmeric off your blender. How to get it off your blender when it stains Life it. Life hacks. Yellow. Yes. It's actually like a gold yellow, not orange. Is I know you say orange gold all the time. Yellow. I feel like it's orange. If you go to Organifi.com like forward slash mind pump, use the code mind pump. Like yellow. You'll get 20% Mine's off orange. any of their products. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, what is the best method to track your basal metabolic rate? This is how many calories your body burns every single day naturally. We give you the secret method. Yeah. The secret <laughs> the method. Secret sauce. Learn it in this episode. Uh, Wish next, we had something to sell and attach uh, to that. I know. Right? Here's the formula. Yeah. Then, we, then if somebody asked us what our thoughts were on walking after eating, because we always talk about being in a parasympathetic state to digest, but doesn't walking... Put you in a sympathetic state. Mm. You're is gonna this walk a the fuck idea? out of it. Yeah, don't walk like a maniac. Uh, the next question is: uh, What is something that we've said on the podcast before that we have since learned is incorrect? It took us forty five minutes to get through this question because there was so much shit. Adam said a lot of bad stuff. <laughs> Wrong, dear lord. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. The, the next question was uh, the final question. As the masculine men that we are, God, we're so manly. Is that what they think? Yeah, that's great. Just t- so much yeah. testosterone. How would we approach trying to raise an LGBT son or daughter? We actually talk about making out with each other yeah, in this portion. Towards the end. It's a podcast. You can't see what we did. It was like a surprise ending. But we tested it out. Yeah. Uh, also, this month, all month long, half off. Hooking you up. Half off Maps Anywhere. Maps Anywhere is the program that allows you to work out with minimal equipment. All you need are bands and a stick. And that's it. You can work out in your hotel room. You can work out at home. You can work out in your church. You can work out at the park. You can work out on an airplane, in the bathroom. Where can't you work out with maps anywhere? <laughs> anywhere. Dude, I always work out in church. You know what I'm what, saying? I was in the front row. Just, that yeah. one came from. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, give me some more. Get them Jesus games. That's right, man. Uh, also, Preach. We, we have very popular maps bundles. So what we do is we take multiple maps programs and we piece them together. Uh, like a Voltron set. Voltron is the robot Nobody that remembers. defended the universe in the Nobody 80s for all of you young people. Yeah. But anyway, we take multiple mass programs, put them together, discount the entire price like 30% off. For example, our MAPS Super Bundle is one year of exercise program. You go from one MAPS to another the entire year, your body changing the whole time. It will make you sexy. Oh, and also, everything comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get a MAPS program, do a whole month on it. If it doesn't blow your mind, take it back, and we will refund you. You can find all of these programs at Mind it doesn't Pump. doesn't blow your mind. It might blow you somewhere else. Mindpumpmedia.com. Yeah. <laughs> that was forced. Thanks. <laughs> t-shirt time! And it's T-shirt time. Yeah! yeah. Give away them shirts. 11 reviews, three shirts going Whoa, out. Whoa, that's like pathetic. It went way down. Mm. Yeah. I have I to tell remember. people how to do it again, dude. Why? Here's because this is what happens. God, People don't know. Gosh, this is what you this, do. This, uh, Eleven. It's like Groundhog's Day. Eleven's dude. one of the worst we've go, had. Go to your time. go to your podcast app. Look up Mind Pump. When it comes up, 
click on the icon. You got to remind them that even if you're already subscribed to Mind Pump, you still got to go Pretend put it. Pretend you don't know who we are. You That's still right. got to search I know it's it. Hard. You still got to search Mind Pump, even if they're already saved and you're subscribed. So. Click on the icon, scroll down a little bit. You'll see ratings and reviews. Leave a five star rating with a good review. If Doug picks it, you'll get a free, incredibly valuable t shirt. Let me, let me tell you. Putting all the pressure on Doug. These t shirts are. I mean, they're incredible. Uh, some of them are made with diamond dust. Oh, my God. Actual we're, dust. We're going Himalayan. From diamonds. Uh, we have unicorn fur yes. on another one. I sure. mean, you basically don't know what you're going to get. You might get a regular cotton T-shirt. You don't know, though. But you won't know until you win the contest. So leave a review. All right. And the three winners are Scott 5 m Brandon at Evolve, Chatty Charlie 87 You are all winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Hey, is is uh, HustleCon's this Friday? This this Friday or Saturday, Doug? I did I messed up last time. What was it? I think it's Friday the twenty second. Let me double check on that. Yeah. Okay. So it's coming up now. Yeah. Which sucks because we're not going to be here. I know. That no, we won't. One. We won't. But Taylor and Eli will be there. They're going to be going. Yeah. Well, are we coming back Friday? We, we fly back in Friday afternoon. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're only there. We take off. Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Really? Do you guys? Do you know anybody that went? That's been to a hustle con. Yeah, Taylor's been already. He already went. Yeah, yeah. What does he think? He says it's awesome. Yeah. So it's just pure entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean that's. I mean, you're gonna have a. I think there's like twelve speakers that come up, mm-hmm. and they're you know they do little like half hour talks, and they come up and kind of tell their their startup. A lot of them are like either startups or companies that have been established for less than ten years mm-hmm. that are very successful. Most of them all are in the you know multi million dollar. They're companies. just given their story of how they came into their. Well, yeah, but I think, I think I, there's specific topics. They, yeah, they curated topics. it a little bit more. Like say for example, like somebody like. Um, you know, that's done a really good job with like email marketing. So, and that was like a lot of their success. Like maybe that's where 80% of their revenue is coming from there. So they talk around that topic since that's kind of their expertise or say like someone like us, even though we're not quite on that level where we'd speak at that, we'd probably speak to podcasting, right? Although Mm -hmm. we have multiple streams of revenue coming in, this is probably what we would consider uh, our expertise or is becoming our expertise in fitness podcasting, right? So I think that's what they just they just pick all these great companies that are really successful and then they pick apart like what areas that they do really well. So it's supposed to be really good. So I I, cool. I wish we were going. I wanted no, to go I with gone. the big thing. The, I, I, the big reason why I would go is to meet all the people that go. Yeah, that too. Yeah. So you got a bunch of serial entrepreneurs that are probably out in the audience. So you got people a lot are of, very serious. About yeah, it's a great place to network. And no, I 100. Yeah. percent I'm all for stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So so have you guys implemented the high dose turmeric yet? Mm-mm. Have I sold it to you enough? Do you, oh, neither I haven't done it yet. I you guys got to you got to try it. Not to interrupt your commercial right now, but Damn. check this out. What? So you know how I talked we'll about circle back, dude. Don't yeah. worry. You know how I was talking about the Everett fucking up my blender with the turmeric because it turns <clears> gold, <throat> it's stained you, the yeah, shit out of your. Do you know how to fix that? Off. Tons wow. of people, bleach. tons of no, no, what? not bleach, <laughs> not bleach in your blender. That's your no, you don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, tons of people. Apple get, cider vinegar. Get, what? No, no. After that episode, tons of people have been DM me, DMing me all the same thing. So you you set it outside and leave it in the sun. That's this, it. This yeah, with nothing in it, just leave it out in the sun. The sun will will bleach off the 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 tumor. Did you try it? Not yet, but I'm all excited to. I just found this <laughs> out. Sunlight. Yeah. That's weird. I, I totally wouldn't have believed it, except for I have like 10 DMs right now from people telling me the exact same thing. That's very mm. strange. I wonder uh, how. I don't know. I'm yeah, excited to try it, though. I think that might be true. Oh, well, I mean, I think it, it's remember, pretty you, random that 10 random people. That, well, yeah. no. Remember when I dumped that turmeric gold drink on my carpet? Yeah. And it was this horrible yellow color, and I couldn't get it out. I have one of those steam cleaners. Yeah. I tried to clean it up, and it wouldn't go away, but it gets sunlight there. Oh, and it's disappeared. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. I bet your carpet has less inflammation too. <laughs> Stupid. It does. What just a gonna, terrible just gonna, dad circle, just gonna circle back. <laughs> gonna circle back. I want you guys to try it, <laughs> bro. I want you guys to try it. It's actually pretty crazy. It takes like a few weeks, but it's dramatic. I haven't. Been, I've done a couple. I mean, we talked. It's a, not like you can't just do it once. You do it consistently. Okay. So I have, how long? How mm. consistent do I need to be with? It's Every a day. super dose. You're saying I'm doing eight capsules a day of the of the turmeric one. Oh, so wow. whatever that way dose to is. sell those pills uh-huh. and fucking Organifi. Yeah. So I do. Organifi's gonna you love gotta go you. through a loading <laughs> phase. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that we sound like those creatine like guys. School. You gotta load the turmeric yeah. first. Yeah. No, 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 no. The first four orally. The second four rectally. 
Because oh, wow. you want both. No, I'm just kidding. I go I go four in the morning, four at night. I'm and, not that committed. And it works. Okay. Speaking so of putting things in your try. rectum, I thought you were going to do the coffee in them. I'm a little disappointed that you yeah. haven't set that up for no, these weekends. No, dude. It's a lot of, that's a lot of planning. Adam wants the video. I know that. I know yeah. that. That's why he's saying this. Mm. He doesn't really care about mm. the coffee no, on him. He, he just, just wants to see me. On it my seems s- like a great bonding thing for you and Jessica. To do that? Yeah. Nah, you know, it's old. We've done stuff like that before. <laughs> yeah, you see, I knew you already tuned with weirder <laughs> shit than yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, but you know what, though? It, it was like first base. I, I want to do it, but it's, <laughs> that's first play. <laughs> we, we went to first base yeah. last night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys made out? Hold my <laughs> rubber tube. Yeah, super happening. my butt. Yeah. No, it's, uh, um, it, it's, if I was thinking about doing it, but it's a lot of prep. Like, I feel like you make a mess. You got to do it in the shower and all that stuff. And I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, uh, it I think. It is messy seeming. Yeah, what are you going to lay? You're going to lay on the floor? What that's if what some ben, of it gets out on the that's floor? What ben, that's what Ben you does. You go sideways, suck your thumb. He, lays, let it he lays on the, on his side in his in his bathroom floor, man. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember that's how long he said. Do you remember how long he said it is? Is it like 20 minutes you have to do it for? I don't know. He that's says he just time. gets up and just goes right in the toilet right afterwards. Just, just. No, that's like, a, yeah. It just falls out. It's just like, what? Yeah, and it goes. It's pure liquid, though. What if it comes out? I just imagine that, and I wish I wouldn't have. You know what I mean? Him doing that with a coffee? Yeah. Yeah, no. I'm cool. I'm going to do it. I will do it, but I just I need to be ready. Mm. You know what I mean? No kids, nothing. Because that'd be a weird. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to explain that to your kids. Daddy, what are you doing? walks in. Daddy, what are you doing? You ever get. Listen, son. Sometimes you got to do things. You ever get these thoughts in your head, like when you. If you ever do something like that, like what if there's an earthquake or something like that? (laughs) What's going to happen? Try to explain that. Sh- Somebody <laughs> needs to go to the hospital right. real well, quick. Oh, God, let me get this out of my ass. Big old, right. big old yeah. earth, you're running outside. Coffee's coming out your butt. Nobody knows it's coffee. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. You try and live that one out. Stop, know. drop, and roll. That, yeah, that, that to me is less really weird than the, the tube hanging out of your ass. You know, your kids walk in and see someone that, Daddy's an avatar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have a tail? Avatar. The avatar's a He's tails. practicing Sahelu. He's like, ooh. <laughs> what is it, Justin? It's, it's Sahelu. Is that the name of it? Yeah, bro. I can't even that's remember the that. Conne- that's the great Sahelu? connection. That's the bond. You pronounce it right, yeah. too. Yeah, Sahelu. Yeah, somebody's watched that a few times. Yeah. How many yeah, times have you seen it. Avatar? Uh, you know, a few times. You yeah. wish you were not on that planet. I mean, it was. it's all right for like a, a fern gully, you know, remake. Oh, shit. Oh, you know you what I'm saying? You know what? I watched this last weekend. What'd you watch? Here's a here's a cool little documentary series for you guys. Uh, Evil Genius. Yeah, seen it. You seen uh, it? Yeah, I haven't oh, seen it yeah. yet. Why so did, what is it about? Why didn't you say something? You didn't I, like it or what? No, I did like oh, it. Oh, it's fucking brilliant. I so did. Like, I watched it with Courtney. Yeah, it's just it's only a four. I think it's a four episode series. It's one of the, like you remember Dirty Money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like a series like that. So it's this a real is the one so- with the lady in the yes. bo- in the bomb. Yes. yes. So it shows yeah, different yeah. people and this is it's actually it's kind of like did you ever see Making Twisted the Murder? Lady. I saw a little bit of that. Okay, okay. so it's kind of like that. It's a real okay. it's a real story, real case. It was I mean it went on for like ten years unsolved or yeah. something insane, and it's a twisted ass story. Really? It yeah, it's a it's a good Netflix. Watch. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah, that's a good one. The, the next one is something about the stair stairway. It's like a it's a I murder. I didn't watch that one. So I'm yeah, that's the next one on my list, but I heard lots of good things about that. Same thing. Like it's it's kind of like making a murder. It recommended that, that after kind of I stuff. watched yeah. Evil Genius. Oh, very interesting. So, it was that's one of my ones out. So I get to watch that by myself. There's not a lot of stuff I get to watch Why, by myself. What do you mean what do you mean get to? Well, she won't watch it. Yeah, did you guys have shows that like you you watch by yourself? It's oh like, yeah, that was Walking Dead for me. Yeah, so Cor- I, Courtney couldn't handle it. Dude. I was like, I always try and find one show. or two shows that Katrina doesn't like. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I did get <laughs> something like that did happen to me. Yeah, but like, it was <laughs> I was home alone, sick one day. It was a while ago, and I didn't. I you know I was just surfing through on Netflix, and then the other day, Jessica's watching TV, and she's like, "Were you watching a documentary on strippers?" <laughs> I'm like of course I'm like wait was I and then I yeah. remembered there was a documentary on strippers on Netflix totally not what you would expect by the way it's not- I think it's healthy for the relationship I think it's healthy for the relationship for you to have a show that you watch by yourself because there's always going to be that time where she's out of town or she's doing something of course you're home and you feel like vegging out and it's like nothing's worse than being right in the middle of a series that you really like with your partner and then you can't watch and it you can't you watch it yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah. so you're you held always, hostage you've always got to have one or two go-tos in the back just in case you've never watched it and then re- then started over and didn't say anything well, yeah, but I'm like, don't put that out on air, dude. Oh, right you're going to call me out like that? <laughs> 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 Pretending like it's the first time, like, oh, um, shit, that just uh, happened. Yeah. But really, like, I, really, I watched it the I day before. I did that with Game of Thrones, and I was like, <laughs> That's oh, like I shouldn't have done that. I felt like I cheated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like cheating. Yeah. yeah. You can't yeah. do that. 
Yeah, my girl gets out right. about that. Don't watch it till I get no, home. No, me and Jessica don't have series. Well, actually, we do now. We have one series now that we watch. It's the Jersey Shore. Now we've been watching the Jersey Shore. <laughs> I know. Of all the shows I'm trying to get you to watch, by the way, I finally watched the season finale of Westworld. Fucking crazy, right? Epic. So, so epic. well written, dude. Dude, one of the best, like, I don't know, everything I've seen on TV, that was the best episode I've seen. No, it was really- it's, It was up there with, like, like movies that I've seen that no, were no, awesome. No, no, it was yeah. well, very well written. I'll, I'll watch it at some point. <laughs> no, you I think won't. I will. Get out yeah. of here, dude. I'm, I I'm over. I'm, yeah. your, I'm, I'm done Jersey with Jersey Shore's taking up your time Jersey right now. Jersey Shore's <laughs> way more important, bro. You haven't even <laughs> watched Game of Thrones. You know what, though? We don't even have a conversation. You know what? The only reason why you get a pass, the only reason why you get a pass is because you watch enough, like, educational type That's documentaries what I was say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that I, you deserve to watch something that is mindless and absolutely right. stupid. Bro, we watch hardcore documentaries 99% of the time. And so Jersey Shore is like our, you know, brain dead you know, thing know. or whatever because yeah. before that we watched neurons to nirvana amazing documentary on the effects of uh psychedelics on the brain and the studies that they did in the 60s and the ones that they're doing now mm. actually very very good on uh prime amazon prime oh, that's cool yeah highly highly recommend it haven't finished it yet but so far it's fucking fascinating you guys Absolutely watch you guys watch more amazon prime than anything else it seems like mm-hmm. You know Amazon. You know why? Because there's more <laughs> stuff on Amazon Prime, uh, or or just on Amazon, and sometimes I have to pay for it. But whatever. You know Netflix doesn't give you that option, right? If they either they either have it or they don't. Mm. Amazon, if they have it for free, great, and they have the same stuff for free that Netflix has most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. And then they have stuff you can pay for, so I can find everything on there. So I prefer it. I wonder what oh, the wow. best platform is. is. It Hulu? Is it Netflix? Is it Amazon? Oh, Hulu's making moves. Who's winning here? Because oh. you know, I, I feel like for sometimes I feel like Netflix is, but then I see like things like I, I didn't know Hulu picked up um, Disney. No, built yeah, oh, yeah built yeah. They, they they Disney bought into Hulu, right? Uh, but they picked up Billions. I saw that they have that, oh, really? and that's one of my favorite shows on there. So it's kind of interesting to see how this is all going to pan out at the end. Like who gets what. What networks? Like if you're Hulu, like you pick up Showtime, it's, it's HBO, no different. Are they than, going to share them? Like it's a, no different than TV because you know TV was you had the major networks. You know what I mean? ABC, NBC, whatever. So it's going to be just like you that. know. What's crazy is now yeah. on like Fox, ABC, ESPN, all these shows or uh, on TV, you're watching like the finals and all the big sporting events right now, and major advertising spots for YouTube. Hulu on TV. Yes. How funny is, is that, that? I mean, that's got to be like. Uh, imagine being the person who works for that company. Like, Dude, it has to be cannibalizing. Yeah, you got to be like, this fucking sucks yeah. right here. We're advertising for this. <laughs> this is going to be my job right here. They're yeah. going to take it, take my job. It'd be right like here. driving a taxi with an ad for Uber. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 that's you know? what it's got to be. Like. That would be. Tough. And you on the wall. And you got to take it because he's paying you ten grand a month to put it. You're in not your getting taxi any cab. more money. Yeah, they're paying you more than you're probably making at your job to put it up there. Hey, what'd you guys do for Father's Day? Did you guys do anything? I just went for a, a nice hike. Uh, I had the kids. Courtney had to work, so I, we went up. Um, yeah, it looks. Yeah, I saw that your story. That looks. Yeah, amazing. is that right awesome. next to your house? Yeah, it just was in a different direction, so I went a different way. And um, can you walk from your house to get to that? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So even my Beautiful. parents are kind of close. So we went to my parents, hung out with them, and then um, basically walked from there. And it's this cool. It's this cool like mountain biking uh, trail. So. I'm, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to get into it. Oh, really? Like, all my friends like that that are dads and, and are in the area are super. It's this big thing. Like Everybody's into mountain biking now, and they're making all these like trails and parks and jumps and shit for it. So I found one, and we were just oh, kind of walking through it. And I was like, oh, dude, this looks awesome. You geek out with my brother-in-law, bro. I that's, might, I might that's actually his, hook that's up his with your jam, brother-in-law. Dude, that's Except his he's thing. crazy, though. He does like super yeah, insane stuff. But he started just like that. Yeah. I mean, I remember it was just like maybe. So my sister and, and her husband, Tom, uh, my brother-in-law, it's really cool what they do. Like every couple of years, they'll do this. I think it's really neat. I've shared it. I might have shared it on the podcast before, but they, they, they start making a list of all the the things or the attributes that they like within a hobby. Mm. So, you know, and Tom's making his list and it's like, you know, it has to be challenging, has to have a lot of trinkets that I can buy for it, you know, has to be physical, you know, has to be dangerous. Like, so he has like all these things that he, li- what he wants inside of a hobby. And then he takes from there and then he goes and he starts searching things that line up with that. And that's mm. how he came about. That's down. actually pretty smart. Interesting. It's actually really smart. Yeah, My sister yeah. did the same thing too. And that's how she came about paddle surfing. Mm-hmm. So, or I mean, uh, paddle boarding. So she does her, they go every, almost every Saturday, they go their different directions. She goes to Lake Tahoe mm-hmm. and he goes up to the hills 
and he mountain bikes. I heard because I I have a friend who she's a professional uh, mountain bike racer, and she said some of the best trails are up by where you are. At. Yeah, they're all like, over the place, dude. I'm just like like pros. A lot of pros train up there. There's a lot, and yeah, it's, it's almost like every single time like I meet somebody that like my my kids like befriend you know the, these other kids from school and then i get to know the dad and you know try and like hit it off like they're all like really into it so i'm like dad dating it's dad dates like, <laughs> <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's have a play date oh, i want to have one with your dad oh. and then you can hang Things out with that the married couples do Fuck. <laughs> you gotta go you know on dad yeah. dates you know what is funny when you have kids you'll hang out with Adults that you n- would never hang out with just because your friends, Bro. Your, your kids are friends. Yeah. Of course, I you know what I mean. Yeah. Those parties, oh, it's so painful. <laughs> yeah. you know? Like I don't want to talk to you. Like, yeah, I no. have to. So you're just stuck in the situation. Like, what do we have in common? Right? How know. rare does it do, you, do the parents of the kids that your kids hang out with actually line up with the type of people it's you hang out? with? Does rare. it ever happen? You have very, your kid, very rare. It's your kids that are in common. Yeah. Everybody always asks me about fitness, so that ends up becoming the the, the conversation. I, yeah. the whole As time. they're like smashing down cake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, you know, I think for the first like ten years of my career, I really enjoyed that. And maybe that's because I like talking about fitness. Yes. Now the back half, I'm like, I try and avoid it at all costs. Yeah, I, know. I don't mind talking like, about I, it. I do. <laughs> that's yeah, me too, I, man. I do. I'm I'm just, like, ah, yeah. oh, you don't want to know what You're I like, do. Like, oh, you into fitness? Oh, uh, kind of. Uh, Kind of not really. It's yeah, like a yeah, hobby. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, move along. Let's yeah. let's just talk about something. Else. I don't mind I have a podcast. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't mind and talking about fitness as long as it's like stimulating conversation. But it's never stimulating because what you end up answering is stuff like, "Yeah, yeah uh, what's the best thing to do I for eat, this? Yeah, should I eat carbs? And is there a lot of protein and peanuts and stuff like that? And you're like, oh, <sighs> we're gonna be doing this for a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, that's for you direct them to the quo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? No, Actually, no, <laughs> no, I don't direct them to the. Yeah. <laughs> these are yeah. these, remember their kids go to school with my kids. You know, <laughs> I don't want them to listen to the show necessarily. Yeah, like oh. Did you know that so and so's dad? Do you, do you guys not? Weed? Do you guys not tell people that you podcast yet? It's still is it still not to the point where when you meet somebody new like I that, know. you? I, I've sort of been using that lately. I feel like uh, I used to just keep calling myself a personal trainer because like nobody knew what the hell you know a podcast was. So I've been like leading with that a little bit more, and people are like oh yeah, like they look at me like oh yeah, cool, bro. You know, yeah. like, yeah, great. Yeah, in other words, you're, yeah. you're unemployed. That's what they exactly. Say. <laughs> That's what it felt <laughs> like. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah, they, I, I'm like glad you're, you're trying something. It's you like know, saying you're an artist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, between like, jobs, it's a business. <laughs> yeah, like it's a thing. You know, it's like, you, what am I going to say? I'm a fitness fitness entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, like that's even worse. That sounds even worse. Yeah, it, yeah. it does. Sound like an asshole. No, my uh, Jessica's dad. When I first met him, he's like, "So, what do you what do you do?" And I'm like, "Uh, we have a like a fitness media company." And so he's like, "Huh." What does that look like? I'm like, oh, we have a podcast. He's like, how much do people pay to listen to your podcast? I'm like, well, it's, it's free. And you can see the look on his face. He's like, how do you f- make money? Yeah. yeah. How do you like plan on like taking care of my daughter? <laughs> you know? how you, he literally asked me, how do you guys make money? I'm like, well, we get an audience. And then it's hard to explain. Yeah. yeah. You know, we just do it. Yeah, we just do it. No, we had a we had a big family party uh, because it was my cousin's 30th birthday. And so we kind of did this Father's Day birthday thing and oh i had a combined party did weekend. you yeah so i so here's the thing like i feel so bad for my girl because i don't i don't even consider because she's always she wants to know like are there going to be a lot of people there and i always forget to to mention like oh this may be a big party so as we're rolling up i see all these cars outside my aunt's house i'm like oh yeah this, this could be like 80 people i forgot to tell you you know, we walk in, it's just, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Just so many people can be so overwhelming to people See, now who didn't I can, grow up that way. I can totally relate with her. So her and I need to go to some of these events together. Because you're, because you're. Because yeah, that, that's me. Mm-hmm. So I, I had the, this was Katrina's nephew, uh, Jalen. He graduated from UC Davis. So it was a graduation party plus Father's Day at, you know, their house. I don't know if you saw some of the pictures. I did. The videos I did. that I posted or whatever. I saw but, the one with Katrina dancing. Yeah, it was her dad. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, so that was her dad that she was dancing with. He's like a phenomenal dancer. Well, both of them look great. Yeah. So yeah. A lot of pressure on me for, right? <laughs> well, I was yeah, just thinking, I'm, I'm watching and I'm like, for sure, Adam's not dancing. can't just like shift do you not, to right, you know, Do you not dance shoulders. with her like that? Not like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, he's like, he's, that was like, he's got swing and, and line yeah. and everything. That, no, he could do everything. Would like you he, ever take lessons? I know, I was going to say. I would do swing lessons. Yeah. I think swing You'd have cool. fun with it. Yeah. yeah. I would, you know, I'm the type of guy where if my, if Katrina really wanted to, like for like a wedding and she like, hey, you know, let's, let's do, let's do our dance, like a swing dance. Like a bust a move. I'm, yeah. I'm, I would be game for that. Like you could convince me to do that. I would go with you guys. I wouldn't go with Justin because he'd make me look really bad because he moves <laughs> Whatever. so well. Yeah. <laughs> Those hips. Yeah. He's, he's just, right. he moves really, really well. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? 
I'm on the swivel. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. point being that I, I show up there and again, it's it's the same feeling for, for me as I'm sure Jessica has being somebody who wasn't around uh, a lot of family members a lot of the time. It was very, very rare if uh, our family ever got together and it really we really never did. And it definitely was never at the so- the magnitude that her family is. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of pressure for someone like her or I to go to those places because it's a skill that I never developed. One of those being like, to be able to be in this family environment and then remember everybody's name. And then like, I'm really bad too. Like with the family etiquette of like making sure I make rounds and hug fucking everybody before yeah. I leave. Yeah. And it, I, so her family does that too. Oh yeah. Wow. It's very I, similar. I gotta, oh yeah, mm. dude. It's, I mean, Hispanic, can, there's some things in our, their culture. It's the Latin are, culture. Yeah. The Latin yeah. culture for sure is like that. So yeah, I mean, and a couple times I did. My bad, you know. I'm saying bye. We're finally leaving, and it's like I miss somebody, and they're like Adam, and I'm like, don't even remember their name, their name, and they're like, you're not gonna say goodbye, and I'm like, oh fuck, yeah, hug goodbye, and don't forget Mike, my husband. Oh fuck, uh, you know. So like, <laughs> does it take like 30 minutes to leave? Yeah, it does. It take, and you know, I get really like weird about it too because I feel like okay, if I go around and I go to say goodbye and I don't remember their name then I feel yeah. like an asshole so then I try and like dart out and like not be so seen but funny. then I feel like then they, then they think I'm an asshole for not saying goodbye exact conversation I yep. had with with, uh, with Jessica recently and I think the reason one of the reasons so why I have you, compassion for you yeah, Jessica yeah one of the reasons why you guys feel that way maybe because you feel like forced like if I don't do it think people will think I'm rude but it's funny because um, who's that the interview that we listened to with Jordan Peterson he says how we focus so much on vacations and big events when in reality it's the daily things that are the important things like how you come home and how you say hi to people right and we forget why that exists in the culture like because it becomes so because we think we're supposed to do it we forget why we're supposed to do it the reality is it's it's a nice practice to say hi and touch everybody and whatever and so when you remember the why it becomes less like oh yeah well you got to remember for someone like her i though like i i totally it's not a lack of seeing that it's more that you've created a pathway that that doesn't exist and so you have you've, exactly you've trained yourself not to so to untrain that it takes a lot of work i mean shit katrina and i've been together for seven years and it still worked for me mm. you know it's still to this day when we go to big family events like that it's so crazy because you guys know me like if i go somewhere in public and where i don't know anybody I can take I can take over a room and be the life of the party, but put me in an environment where it's all family and I'm supposed to kind of know everybody and then the hugging and the kissing and the like all that shit. I get weird. <laughs> I get I don't get I'm not yeah. myself. So it's it's a it's <laughs> I'd like to see that. Yeah, it's yeah. a really it's really uh you know, and I, I think I do a pretty good job of not feeling like or not looking like I'm uncomfortable, yeah. but I think you guys knowing me would see me kind of be yeah, like, Oh yeah, yeah, Adam's not really in his element. Yeah. You just kinda of magician your way out of it. Do you feel exhausted afterwards? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I you know, and it, one of the things that like and Katrina still like, you know, part of the work for me is to not allow to get frustrated about things. So for example, you know, her family, it, the, the way I am with like my childhood best friends and their family, like I'm very particular about getting over to visit them and spending time with sure. them. And even if we just do absolutely nothing, I want to be with them for hours. Well, that's how she is with her family, right? I'm not that way with my family. And so a lot of patience on my part when it comes to like her preparing to do this. Like, So this whole weekend was all about the graduation mm-hmm. and, and going to Father's mm-hmm. Day. So for two and a half days... It was all about the preparation. I mean, and she's spending like on Friday. It started Thursday and Friday of actually, no, Wednesday. It started Wednesday of getting the stuff that they needed to decorate. And she's making all this home. St- I mean, just crazy amount of effort and time put all into it. And that's it's challenging for me because then it, it, then it impedes on my time with her. Mm-hmm. And then it, it's really frustrating for me because I have my things that I like to go do and do on my own. And that's I know that's challenging for her. When I'm like, well, yeah, I just want to go be yeah. by myself. I want to yeah. go be with my friends. And she she doesn't, and she's getting it now. Like we've been together for a long time. So we've communicated this enough. So she sees now that the way I am with my my friends, my really, really close friends that we grew up together is the same way that she is right. with her. Fa- right. That's my family, you know? So I'm very protective of them. I want to spend extra time with them. Like I don't want to be rushed with them. And so I have to be, I have to learn to be the same way when it comes to her family. Like I'm over there, I'm like, how long are we going to be here for? Mm-hmm. Is this going to be like a, is this an all night thing? Or is this, am I going to be able to get home at a certain time? Like I want all those answers and it's taken a lot of work for me to like, don't just, just be relaxed, just relax, just mm-hmm. go. This could turn into a two in the morning thing, you know, like, yeah. and everybody fucked up and drinking all night long and not, but 
this is really important to her and it's important to her that I enjoy myself and that I'm mingling with the family and stuff. So it's taken a lot of like practice on my part. Too. It's, it's a nice thing. I mean, when you really sit back and, and, and forget that maybe I'm, you know, I have to do this or I'm supposed to do this and just kind of realize why these things occur and why people do it. It's a really nice thing. It's nice that, that families still do that or some families still do that. Well, I think Cause a lot of families don't, you know, and yeah. it's like, I used to trip me out when I was a kid, I'd have friends and, I'd ask them, you know, oh, what'd you do for Christmas? And like, oh, it was just, you know, me and my me and my parents. I'd be like, oh, what about your aunts and uncles? Oh, you know, we they all do their own thing and stuff. It was so strange to me because I was brought up where, I mean, my family parties. I'm not exaggerating. We and eventually we had to split up because nobody had a house big enough for all the people. But at one point, our Christmas parties would get over almost 100 people. Yeah. And we're talking in like a three or four bedroom, regular size, small family home. That's like, dude, they, and it would be insane. We'd they, have all spend the, they all spend the night together and shit, bro. It's like, oh, dude, we have the. I'm group. like, you're fucking tripping. I am not <laughs> sleeping on a goddamn floor in a sleeping bag. I'm 36 years old and my house is 15 minutes away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, right. But they, that's what they all do. They oh, all no, come we'd have, we'd have and, a garage set up with tables. Yeah. We'd have tables set up outside. We'd have tables set up in the living room. People would sit, I mean, at bedrooms, people would be hanging out. Uh, I remember Christmas, we would have a room dedicated to presents. So you'd open the door to a bedroom and it would be like, you couldn't walk in. There were too many presents. And it, it got pretty crazy. And that's when we had all of our, our cousins would, now we've had to split up because there's too many people, but it's getting big again. Because now we're all now, having do kids. You, are, are you really patient with Jessica or do you find yourself ever getting like uh, frustrated with like maybe her, her inability to maybe let loose and enjoy the environment as much as you do. She's excellent when she gets in with a small group or one on one and has conversation with people because she's very of course. She's very good at that, very empathetic. Um, so no, I don't I don't get I, I can I can empathize with her. It is an overwhelming I, you know, I try to place myself in, in her shoes and I I don't mind necessarily groups, especially if it's family, because then I can or other people's family, I can talk to people. But I empathize with her, so I'll, I'll we'll usually leave a little early. We won't stay super super late because I can see that she's towards the end of it. I can tell she's tired. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot of stimulus. No, uh, thrown yeah. at you. Well, especially, especially my family. Right. We're loud as fuck. Yeah. yeah, everybody's you know. This is just like Katrina's family. Food and like people espresso are, people and are alcohol. pulling on my shirt to take shots and do all <laughs> this. I'm getting interviewed by everybody. Yeah, I'm the guy who's dating the you know the very successful, beautiful niece aunt. Of everybody, like Katrina's kind of Katrina and her mom are kind of like the the rocks in the family, mm-hmm. and here I'm the guy, right? Who's 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 dating dating her? So I've, I'm getting bombarded from all angles. Everybody's interviewing me and and challenging me and like wanting Dude, to get drunk see, with me and like at least you guys. I mean, to me that sounds way more fun because like you know, in, in both families, like Courtney's family, my family, like actually not so much my family, but like her family, it's very tough to get conversation going. You know, it's like this big, like everybody just kind of stares at each other. There's no like stimulus. Nobody's playing games. Nobody's watching TV. Nobody's doing anything. It's like, it's this, you know, we're we're drinking, but we're like just kind of staring at each other. I'm like, Oh my God, dude, somebody say something. (laughs) So I'm always like trying to get the party going, you know, and like, it's so exhausting, you know, like I'm always trying to like get everybody loosened up. That's so weird to me because Courtney doesn't strike me to be like that at all. No, she's not. But her parents are like, yes. Oh, wow. Is it just super kind of conservative? Yeah. Don't share too much. Think of it this way. So there's lots of engineers and and lawyers. Uh, Super intellects that are over over analyzing everything. And I can't even pretend to have like a smart conversation because they're going to take it in a place where I'm like, I'll just get lost. You know, like yeah. laser optic engineer. Yeah, good luck. You yeah. know, having like <laughs> talking about sci-fi. You yeah. know, what I mean? yeah. I'm like so trying, to, you know, talk about like movies and stuff. And it's just I feel like an idiot. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's that. And then I mean, my my side of the family, like we play games and stuff. So it's like you interact and you go outside and yeah. you do stuff. And so I mean, there's a little bit of that. So there's some ex- escape. But she's uncomfortable with that because mm. she doesn't like playing games and all that. And so she's always like, "Get me the fuck out of here!" So, you know. We have we have really deep. Conversations conversations and in topics are typically not off limits so and jessica likes that because she's like oh my god your family talks about like we'll talk about anything politics we could talk about religion we could talk about you know people's relationship to food we can talk about you know when we grew up and how we were with our parents and so the top the conversations can get really deep and really heated and she'll appreciate she appreciates that because she likes that kind of yeah that kind of talk but Mm. yeah it's funny we get home and i can tell you know poor girl she's 
she's tired from from all of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's exhausting, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it, it's exhausting. Yeah, it's I, a lot of work. Yeah, because I think that just it doesn't seem like that much work for. Oh you. no, I can get tired from it. Yeah, I can definitely get tired. Right, from like it. if you can get tired from it, that you have exactly. to multiply it by ten for for exactly. her, right? That you you have to know that. But you know, I I'm lucky because I'm right. I think that Justin or what you said, I think that that would be way more challenging for me. At least her family is like loud and vocal and want to party they want to play ping pong they want to play basketball like okay that's cool yeah you can kind of observe the chaos right versus like having to be the the source of it what's hard what i've found hard after seven years so that's like her her brothers and the cousins like we've gotten tight over all these years so that part's coming but every big party family event there's always 15 to 20 people i don't know Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's a cousin that's a best friend since childhood (laughs) it's like (laughs) the parties are so big that even after seven years there's still people that I, I don't know. Jeez. You know, I go there, it's only the first or the second time that I met them. I'm like, fuck, I've been in this family for seven years. I'm still meeting fucking people. Like, yeah, when does this shit end, dude? Oh. She met my whole family like fucking first weekend. <laughs> you know what I'm well, Here yeah. they all are. There's yeah, all there five. Is. There's yeah. the five of them that I see right there. There you go. Can you remember that? Well, we yeah. actually, we saw some cousins that we hadn't seen in, I probably haven't seen them in like a few months, which for us is a long time to not see, you know, certain parts of our family. And they were just tripping over how fast my son's growing. So I measured him. The kid's gain, he, he's growing like over half an inch a month right now, like a wow. ridiculous amount. And, but the funny thing is, his arms and his feet are growing faster than the rest of his body. <laughs> so he just looks like a big spider. Yeah. So I was, I was telling my son right now, I'm like, I'm like, do your arms feel long to you? He's like, <laughs> Way to make me self conscious, Dad. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know what? I've done a he's good. A, he's walking around like this now. Yeah. No, he's like, yeah. He goes, my he goes, my arms are as long as my friend's arms that are taller than me. And when you hear the kid talk now, his voice is really starting to crack. Dude. Oh man, it's the best thing in the world. That's so. Funny. I tried to explain that to my to my my eight year old. You know, like how his voice was going to change. There's going to be a moment where he's going to be, hey, Dad, dude, go get me. Yeah. I hear him scream. I hear him yelling through his microphone when he's playing video games to his friends. And I'm just <laughs> fucking rolling. Ah, you guys, come get him. Help me out over here. I'm like, dude, can you hold it steady? Can you try to I so remember so that, yeah. Oh, it's so funny. His little mustache is starting to come in. He's turning 13 next month, dude. Wow. 13 do you, when do you teach him how to shave? Does he shave yet? He doesn't have enough to really shave, but I... That's I, when you start, though. Oh, man. I really? mean, I, How yeah. old were you guys when you started shaving? It's, that's about... That's close, dude. I mean, maybe maybe 14. I think 14. Dude, how did your hair grow initially? Because, like, for me, it was, like, all oh, my neck. I got these, like, like, random hairs that would grow. Like, little cr- from yeah. here? You yeah, grew, like, it was, like, <laughs> from, from my up. neck up. Dude. You were a neck beard? Yeah, I was neck beard. Dude, <laughs> there's a guy in Los Gatos where I had my studio, this old man who used to come in. I don't know where he came from. He had overalls on. He would always come to the shopping center. And he shaved everything except his neck. So we used to call him Neckbeard. Wow. Because he had a big, bushy <laughs> That's beard an interesting his- look. It was the weirdest thing. But yeah, yeah anyway. But uh, no, I think probably 14, dude. I can see, but I want to push it because I can't wait to have that moment with him where we shave together. Right. You know? I mean, he's, he has an yeah, ass. Or he has, I mean, I, I think technique. I remember asking for Christmas for like an electric razor was like when I, I asked Not for Not a good one. way to start. Did yeah. he ever? Did no, he ever just do it on his own? And remember, and I wasn't practice. Much. No, no. <laughs> oh no. my God, my youngest. Like, he tried to shave. Yes, he he saw me doing it, and then so he tried to do it, and was like, and he cut himself like on his. I caught him in the mirror trying to shave is the funniest thing ever. But I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> you're gonna hurt yourself. It was crazy, but it was like so funny because he obviously watched me, you know, shave in front of him. No, so my daughter did though. Yeah, my daughter did that. Really, shave her face, her legs. Oh, her legs, uh, little shit. Yeah, because. You know, listen. What is the right age that you let girls? What 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 age are you supposed to? I mean, to- I guess whenever. You know, here's the here's the thing. Okay, I feel like that's less of a big gonna, deal than the, the, the say makeup so, thing. That's a little like I'm gonna say right something now. a little racist, but I can say it because it's my my own my own <laughs> wow. culture. Well, all right, I'm gonna put my Italian seat on. Italians tend to be hairy. I don't know if you guys knew this, and the girls <laughs> tend to get hairy <laughs> pretty quickly. So my poor little girl, you know, she gets she gets you know, and she's not that bad, you know what I mean? But she gets hair and stuff on her, you know, legs. She's a little kid, sure. And so her friends would say stuff to her, and she's like, you know, she tells me, "Why are my legs hairy?" I'm like, "Well, I mean, it's normal. I mean, have you seen your ants?" I, said, your- <laughs> I told her, "I said, have you seen your ants? It's not as yeah. bad as your ants. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> your ants. I said, yeah. I said, have you seen your ants' arms? They look like mine, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I guess she went in the shower. So my ex told me this. She calls me on the phone. She's like, your daughter shaved her legs. I'm like that little shit. She oh, got her razor man. and fucking already. Yeah. So now she shaves her legs. Mm. I think that's okay. She's eight. 
So what? Uh, I know. What are you going right. to do? Right. Shaving, I mean, shaving legs, and, and, and especially since that she's probably, like you said, she probably has hairier legs. It's accelerated faster for her in comparison to probably her peers. It's not that bad, but when you're young, yes, it's you're big, so hyper yes. aware. Every little thing when matters. Everything. Yeah, especially yeah. if your friend says something. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? If your friend says something, then you're like insecure about it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I never knew what a unibrow was until somebody pointed it out on my face. Did you have a unibrow? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do yeah. you pluck it now? Yeah, I do all the time. Just, you still do? Just with my yeah yeah I have to just when too. I think of it you I don't? just boop. I plucked it once gone forever wow I am not what? I break the I break the rules a little bit see all my both hairs on my are, arms dude I have like no hair on my legs you're both hairier than I am both you guys are no, no. Yeah. I don't know about that you are bro Depends. look at your arms bro just because it's just blonde. my arms though my back and like chest nothing it's true you have yeah it's you have, weird you can see right through the to the pink it's like skin. <laughs> it's like everywhere I'm clothed I'm good you bro know? Yeah. bro you were cracking me up on the beach. <laughs> Justin was looking oh, at me. Oh, I got me. so red. Je- yeah, Justin was Fuck. looking at me. And he's like, "Why is your skin gold?" <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the sunglasses I had on, but you were shiny. Bro. You know what I mean? I just had to point it out. It, it could have been those mushrooms. You actually look maybe. good, though. I'm yeah. looking at you right maybe now. It, it looks like your color. It turned good, bro. It didn't yeah, peel. You don't, yeah, I'm, I, you know. Did you not peel at all? No. Yeah, no. You look great. No. See, it's one of those things, dude. It takes was, a lot of time for me to build a base. Like, bro, you, you guys are just fucking. It just happened. He couldn't stop talking about it. He kept looking at me to start laughing. He's like, why are you just, he's like, you're, you have like a gold sheen yeah. on your skin. You look like a walking trophy. You know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck is like going on? Like a bronze yeah. trophy. Yeah. <laughs> like somebody just like painted you up. It's you know? my, yeah, it's my, my Sicilian jeans. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe that's Who it. had the article that they wanted to bring up? Was that you, Justin? Yeah, so what I saw was in, in the news, like with Fitbit, I guess what's happened is there's six of their employees got indicted uh, that they hired what? on, yeah, fr- from Jawbone. So they came from Jawbone and basically gave a lot of the trade secrets from Jawbone to oh, Fitbit. What? And so <clears throat> I think it was 2011, 2015. They've been going through these court cases of like lawsuits. So Jawbone knew about this, and so now this is all kind of surfacing and it's affecting you know Fitbit's business. Oh so. shit, dude! I you know what? They're they've been their stock was started dropping. I think I want to say like six months. Don't quote me on this. I know it's been a, it's been about six months to eight months when it started to really hit start going down and what i thought it was more so too is it's just such now that now that the technology is out there mm-hmm. and you can reverse engineer anything these days and change just a tiny thing and then not get sued for it so i feel like it's so it's such a competitive space now mm-hmm. yeah it's like every not only are all the the wearables that have been dominating the space still around but then you also have got anybody and everybody that has an app now can now attach it to a wearable mm-hmm. i mean our buddy craig was working on a wearable for a minute there know, it's dude. like everybody everybody's trying and it's all just yeah repurposed like inf- like the same technology just got repurposed in different ways to, to bend around these patents and so I yeah know, they, they went out of business dude like jawbone went out of business and so it's and it's the, which, interesting what's happening with this, right? Because Jawbone too, they were they did the earpieces and they did other things besides just the wearables. You know, I'm still very skeptical that any of these wearables are going to truly impact uh, society for fitness. I They're really not. am because it's not. I don't think it's an awareness issue. I really think because the people who end up buying oh, those, see, I, dis- them, I disagree with that. I know we've talked about this. Yeah, I disagree. I, would, I, would I disagree think- with it because, and, and, and again, I'm I'm applying this with somebody right now. It's such a people are so fucking unaware of their their lack of movement through the day. Mm-hmm. That's just for that reason. Now, I think wearables, like just as a tool by itself, without teaching someone how to use the tool, yeah, it can yeah. be. But that what tool isn't like that? I mean, if you just start swinging away with a hammer and no one's ever taught you how to swing with yeah. a hammer, it's yeah, like you, li- you need to learn something from it. You right. can't just but like. See, see but it. I think it's become. I mean, it, it's definitely for for people that I've coached and trained. I mean, I'm wearing mine right now, and for that exact reason, even as well trained as I am, it's very easy for my day to get away from me, and then me mm-hmm. go like. Man, have I moved that much today? I feel like I've been active, mm-hmm. and just to be able to have something that I can reference to kind of see my but movement. That's, but well, that's what I honest, mean. The, when it's going to be relevant is when they put it all together. And so, like our our buddy from Neutrino, you know, is an example of like trying to actually create a platform where they take in twenty three and Me, they take in you know their gut health, they take in the steps, and they 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 integrate all these different uh, uh, metrics out there that you can actually get like 
uh, these sensors to passively aggregate all this data for you. So when you can kind of present it to somebody like, look, here's what the fuck is going on with your entire body. And then you could see if I just tweak this one area of what I'm doing in my day to day process, it's going to have massive impact. It is. But see, here's my point with that. Like if somebody hires you to coach them and you're using it as a tool, it, it, that's a, there's already a self-selection bias in the sense that that's a person Who's already who's reaching out? Thinking. To right. Yeah. Who's already aware I enough have, to know to hire a coach? My my mm. skepticism is: is it gonna is it gonna impact just the people who are gonna want to work out anyway? Mm. Probably. Yeah. It's a tool. Is it gonna impact people who don't? Which is a majority of people. I don't think so. The man. reason why the reason why I still do is because because of what we've seen over the last ten to fifteen years, and 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 really over the last fifty plus years is the 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 lack of movement and just the average person is just so unaware of that even if you don't know how to use the tool and even if it does create some bad habits or whatever with them at least making them aware of how little they move throughout the day i think is a step in the right di- direction or better off than not knowing at all or assuming mm-hmm. maybe i mean i i, I de- of course there's definitely a side of me that thinks more information is better but i you know i look at studies like when restaurants list, you know, calories and macros doesn't change eating habits. In fact, sometimes it goes in the opposite. Um, when people become more aware of, you know, their activity levels through other means, it hasn't changed anything. Really, the only thing that seems to change people's activity level <clears throat> is if this where they're living, the culture is more active. In other words, if somebody from a suburb moves to an urban area where you have to walk everywhere, then people become more active because it becomes a part of their their life. So it's, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one for me because we have more tools. We've had tools for a while now. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, it hasn't been hard to find out what's been in food for decades. And yet people still seem to not really care. So I don't know, man. I don't know if it's more information or if it's just like a behavioral psychological yeah. thing. Yeah, that we need you to know, do. I don't know. I'm, I, it, I have a hard time saying that having more information, more metrics is, is it, but can it be? Absolutely. But the, I think the more tools and resources that we have, the better off overall as a society we are. Hmm. I think I there, agree. I, I agree. definitely think that it's going to create bad habits. I definitely think there'll be people that will be uh, that will use it and go, "Oh, I did ten thousand steps today, so then I can get so a Big I'm Mac. Done. Yeah. So I can get a Big Mac today, right. where they probably wouldn't even had the Big Mac in the first place, but because now that they fucking walked ten thousand steps, they now justify right. eating right. something bad, right? right? So or less good for them, right? So I do see all of that happening. But I personally have seen just, I mean, we're talking about, and and I didn't have it since the beginning of my training career, but about midway through. So pretty close to a thousand people, hundreds for sure of people that I've impacted their lives by utilizing these tools and coaching them how to do it. So well, either way, it's like, you know, if you're a forward thinking person and like you're in that bias, right? And you're, you're trying to like improve yourself, like having those metrics is going to be valuable. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you're not that kind of person, you're going to seek out a coach eventually because you don't want to do the work yourself, right? You want you want somebody else to kind of like tell you like all the steps it's going to take to get you to your goal. And, you know, as a coach, like I, I having all of that and, and having reference points of like, you know, their lifestyle and like, mm-hmm. like really peering in to more than just when I see them for the workout is super helpful. Well, it's like, are we, are we better off with or without calculators? Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm. Same thing. I mean, I mean, just, we, people become so dependent on that. They don't know yeah, how who to does long division. Anymore? Right. Yeah. I mean, but no, are, I, are we as a society, are we better well, off yeah, with, yeah. with a tool like I, that? No, or no, not? no, I'm not saying, I, I think you're right in the sense that more information is better. I'm just a little skeptical as to whether or not that is going to really change behaviors because ultimately people have to decide that they want to change, that they want to do things. You know, it's, it's right. almost like, look, it's for a while now, it hasn't been really a lack of information. It, it's been there for a little while. Definitely been harder to access and it's definitely been harder to utilize. But I think a lot of people know that they probably should move more and probably eat a little less and that kind of stuff. So it's just because, I, you know, I tell you what, you see these, these step <coughs> counters have been around now in the market for a while. But yeah. have they really made a huge impact I- in terms of people's activity levels? By now, I think we would have seen a bigger change. Oh, I think it's too early. Yeah, I think it's too early to say that. I think how I th- long has Fitbits been? They been, haven't been around that long. Not mm-hmm. even ten years. Five years. Even yeah, before that, like, a body bug. It's like right. Yeah. It's, it, it, 
And it's not even, I mean, Fitbit and I would say Fitbit and I mean, the Nike, Nike Fuel Band and maybe Apple Watch, like they've really made it mainstream. Nobody knew who the fuck the body bug was. Unless you were a personal trainer at 24 Hour yeah. Fitness, you didn't know what the fuck a body bug yeah. was. Yeah, so these are weird fucking oh, medical been, condition. It has been. Well, it's founded in 2007. But I don't think it's had real market penetration. Yeah, for no, that it long. didn't. Yeah, it didn't really get really popular until after 2010. But so still, even then, if we just don't we don't have a lot of I think data to support whether it's it's bad or good. I but no matter how you look at it, again, I just use the analogy of the calculator. I mean, has the calculator made some people dumber at doing math? Absolutely, but it's probably excelled others, and it's become a tool that you now can become better at a lot you of build other things. off of that, yeah. right? So, and I think of this as another tool like that, like. I think being able to understand, like using an, an app like Fat Secret and using a tool like Fitbit can take you to another level of understanding you yourself and nutrition and your body and how that all works. Without it, for the average person, I think it's even more mm-hmm. challenging. I, I, so it, I think it just brings a new level of awareness to people. Well, so I'm looking up studies right now because I figured there probably are some studies on whether or not these technologies actually increase activity or that they actually work. And I'm reading, they did do some studies on this and they found that randomized control trials involving 800 test subjects in 2013, 2014 found that after one year of use, a clip on activity tracker had no effect on their overall health and fitness, even when it was combined with a financial incentive. Wow. Even to incentivize people with money, people still didn't do much with it. And uh, another study in 2012 found that it didn't. It's it's you just got to decide. It's crazy. It's, well, it reminds me of see. All- so now that that going back to the hammer analogy, and I know the hammer is a bad analogy because that's such an easy tool to use. I should use a, a tool that's a little more challenging to use. But imagine if someone just threw out all these tools and just said, "Hey, go figure out how to do it." You're going to get a bunch of results like that. Well, now, I have to look deeper, but I would assume if it was a study, they probably gave 800 people Fitbits and they said, "Okay, here's how they work. Here's mm-hmm. what the steps are. You know, right. monitor and your that's activity. It. No education around it. No coaching around it. It's this is how they work." Or go figure this out. Yeah. You know well, what I'm I think coaching by itself would be more effective than anything else. Yeah. Right. I mean, that would be ultimately. That's like giving somebody well, like, again, it, just do some push-ups. It's, again, it's a tool. It's one so thing. don't you think it's naive of anybody to use a tool without learning about the tool? Yeah. I mean, Or just changing their behaviors. I, I think it's going to go back to coaching, always. Yeah. I don't think, the, that's what I'm saying. I think these tools with a coach could be could be phenomenal by themselves coaching or education i feel like if you listen to mind pump enough we've talked about this a lot of this stuff you know Mm -hmm. i think that that would help so i don't think you necessarily need to hire a personal trainer or coach but i think educating yourself about a tool that you're about to use just seems pretty fucking obvious i mean just because it's a wearable it's not going to hurt you do anything really it's just being aware of your patterns you know and so it's like if they just see numbers it's just numbers like oh i did this this week i did like there's no relevance to it. You yeah. haven't given it any value. So, like, in order to give it value, you have to like set out goal specifics and like have programming attached to it and like have coaching. So yeah. it doesn't fucking matter. Like, if, if I'm just seeing numbers. Well, the thing about a coach that's so effective, besides the education and the coaching aspect of it, is the accountability. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I have a tracker on and let's say it buzzes every two hours, to reminds me you need to move, you need to move. I'm not letting anybody down when I ignore that shit. Like, I'm not moving right now. But if I have a coach who's a human who I have to be accountable to, now I'm like, okay, my coach told me I should do this. I probably could, you know, okay, I'm going to do this because I know my coach is going to talk to me about it. But if it's electronic, it's, you know, it's not the same. It's just that whole behavioral thing. Uh, I I think we need to really, I understand as a trainer that the information I give my clients was, is not nearly as valuable as the support. It was the support that was the most valuable thing that I think that they found. Of course. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's where I thought Fitbit was on the right track because they had like – it was very community-based, so mm-hmm. you could connect easy with people, Facebook friends and all that stuff. Yeah. Where that was like shareable, and so like people could monitor – like have accountability yep, with yep. you know peers, so – that I think that piece in itself is is valuable. I like the 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 um the practice of like doing an activity, ritualizing an activity, like going for a walk after every meal, or mm-hmm. in the morning when I have my coffee, going for a walk, or something like that, where you ritualize it. You because know, then the, when you connect it to something that you're gonna do every so you, day anyway. So you yeah. know, though, what led to that personally for myself was the beginning of tracking and making 
be sure, becoming sure. aware of sure, that. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like otherwise, like I like where you could fit it in. Yeah, I started to realize. Whoa, I could easily, and this is still today, right? I can easily go from a three thousand step day to a eighteen thousand step day, and the difference for for me at six three two hundred and ten pounds right now, that's a difference of 1500 calories burned in yeah. a day roughly you know yeah, give yeah. or take and so just to give you an example i mean so not to, to mention all the health benefits and the mood right, benefits right and, yeah. so just and so if i i could easily string three of those low days together i can easily string three of those high days together and so therefore my nutrition and, and my intake should reflect that some sure. way based off of my goals and so most people are just clueless of that mm-hmm. because they've never really paid attention to that. Yeah. And so to me, at least doing that and then because you, you don't again, you don't want to become dependent on it either. Right. You don't mm-hmm. want to like, oh, I can only be fit when I'm following my Fitbit. I have my coach. I fell out everything in sure. my fat secret because that will be fucking torturous for the rest of your life. But I think an, enough practice of utilizing the just, tool and becoming so it aware becomes of it. Your, and your then, you try, then you start to implement habits. I mean, mm-hmm. this morning I got up extra early just to go for a three mile walk because I know that. I'm on my game, on my A game right now, and I know that's some of the things that I just need to incorporate right. in, for, in order for me to com- be able to have some flexibility within the diet. Otherwise, I can't have any flexibility right. when I'm only moving 3,000 steps right, a day. Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I wanted to ask you, share some some cool, weird science that I l- read about this this morning. So you know when you stay in the water for a long time, how your fingers get like pruny and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know why that happens? No, I don't. I had no idea. No. So I thought it was osmosis. Yeah, I thought, oh, it has to do with the water doing something to your skin. No, it has nothing to do with that because when people have nerve damage to their fingers, mm. they don't get prune. They don't get pruny. So if you have nerve damage to your hands and you put your hand in water, you could soak it in there, and you won't get pruny at all. It's actually a function of the central nervous system, or somehow a function of the central nervous system. And the reason why it happens is to help us grip things that are wet. Oh, Shut the weird. fuck up. This is what they believe because they did these tests on this. And Get they, the fuck out yes. of here. So, so this is a, a leftover. Where did you read this? That's something like X-Men I read this stuff. morning. Yeah, yeah, I read this. I thought it was cool. I read it this morning. <laughs> Maybe was, we were Aquaman first? Yeah, dude. Well, we definitely. Mermen. Not definitely, but the. <laughs> Mermen. Mermen. <laughs> you know what's so funny? You were a mermaid, don't you? Dude, lie. there was like a, a, a there was some show out there. I think it was on the Discovery Channel. that was totally like fake. You know, like and it, they like we just found a mermaid. Oh, are mermaids know? real? Yes. Like Courtney for a second, like believed it. She's like, "Oh my god, look bro!" At this. I was like, <laughs> "I had an, like, honey, this is so fake." I had an entire <laughs> argument with my ex-wife about that. What? Yes, we argued, and I'm like, "This is fake. There are no mermaids. This would be the biggest news of all time, <laughs> like forever, right? This is real." She's like, it's "No, right up there with unicorns." She's like, "It's real." I'm like, "No, it's it's not." Real, yeah. But anyway, aquatic yeah. ape theory, right? Yeah. No, but it, but apparently we evolved. Everybody, everything evolved from the ocean, right? But that's really if you have nerve damage, you could put your hand in the water with nerve damage, and you will not have, you know, pruny, you know, skin or whatever. Mm. And so they did these studies where people were grabbing things that were were uh, wet to see how how well they could grip it. And mm-hmm. there's a something like twelve to fifteen percent increase in grip grip ability when your skin is pruny. Mm-hmm. So it's a fucking it makes a lot of sense. So it makes sense. We'd yeah. be in the water fishing around for hours trying to catch a fish so we could eat. And yeah. then it's, you know, finally they, they start to, that's crazy. Isn't that weird? That is it weird. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah, that All is. Right. Fun fact. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from the Dave Lifestyle. What's the best method, in your opinion, to track your BMR? Yes. You know why I picked this question? Because you can go online and try and yeah, figure out your so BMR. so many formulas. And they're all wrong. Yes. They're all going to be wrong. Generic as fuck. The variance between your, your basal metabolic rate from individuals is so dramatic, and your own metabolism can be changed dramatically, right. yeah. even without changing your lean body mass or fat. Although those do affect your basal metabolic rate, you could weigh the same and you could increase or reduce your metabolic rate just through 
the way you ever you do the yourself. body gym where you like breathe mm-hmm. into it and all that? And it's just like it's it was so frustrating because it yeah, it would change all the time. Like we would we would retest and it was like totally like something completely different. Well, we talked about this when we had when we interviewed Lane. We talked about reverse dieting and then you know I did that video on YouTube with Holly and. It's totally true. Like, I'll t- we'll take a client and, you know, let's say it's a female and she's been dieting hard for or always, right? She's always in a deficit, lots of cardio, metabolism's really slow. I've done this a million times. This is not, uh, this isn't super out of the ordinary. I've seen it happen all the time. And let's say, let's say she's consuming 1,200 calories a day and anything over that, she'll gain weight. Well, over the course of six months where we slowly increase her calories, changes stimulus with resistance training, let's say in six months she gains three or four pounds of muscle, which is a lot of muscle for a female to gain. That three or four pounds of muscle does not account for the 800 more calories she can eat a day now. I mean, three three pounds of muscle doesn't burn 800 more calories every single day. It shouldn't. So there's something else that's happening and we don't quite know what is going on. And the reverse can be true also with somebody who's constantly trying to feed their body to gain weight. I was in this, you know, in this scenario where I was always trying to put on mass, always, always, always. And I'd get to the point where 4,000 calories, you know, and I'd lift weights once a day. It wasn't like I was doing cardio and stuff. 4,000 calories to maintain anything under that, and I would lose weight. And it's because I got to the point where my basal metabolic rate got so high. Till, till today, the best way that I've ever found, found to track basal metabolic rate is the hard way, which is track your food. See how many calories you're eating every single day. If you're not gaining weight, assume that that is your basal metabolic rate and then work from there. Right. Because the, everything you get online is so. I know, up. like tracking your weight and like the consistency and like what you. And, and try and keep your meals consistent you, too. Yeah, that's hard because yeah, you have hard. to. You got to do that for an extended period of time yes. too. It can't be for a couple of days right. and be like, oh, that's where I'm at. It's not like, going to give you any val- no, valuable data. Yeah, you need to go for a few weeks minimum right. before I would tell somebody like that's a good place to get your PMR because easily stress, sodium, water, carbohydrate intake all will manipulate your weight up or down significantly for each person individually, right? So making sure that you're somewhere consistent about it. And again, here's another place where I see value in these tools, you know, like, okay, I'm trying to figure out what my BMR BMR is. So I'm not really going to train really much this next two weeks. I'm going to just move and stay consistent with my movement. Like, okay, I step 8,000 steps per day on a normal day. So I'm going to stay right around that range. I'm going to eat like around these calories and kind of see what happens up or down from your weight. And that gives you a better idea. So here's a, a place where I would implement Implement this tool to kind of figure that out. Yeah, really, it's finding that maintenance. You it, know, like what does that really look like? It is because the numbers can be super dramatic. I mean, I've had big clients whose basal metabolic rate, once we figured it out, was very low. You know, these are mm. people over two hundred pounds. You know, some I've had. I had a client that was two fifty, uh, uh, a female, two hundred fifty pounds, and she wasn't eating more than like 1300 calories a day and she was just maintaining her body weight. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's funny because when I first started as a trainer, I'd say probably the first six to eight years, I thought they were lying. I totally thought they were lying completely. Yeah. And definitely a good chunk of people are lying m- m- many times because they're unaware, but sometimes they're not. And it would blow me away that there were people like that. And then there would be people who were so much smaller, but because of the stimulus that they placed on their body and the way they would eat, would consume you know two times as many calories. I mean, the 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 difference can be so dramatic. Well, it's this insane. this question even uh, you know lines up with what you just said about the the step counter. Here we are, we get caught up over you know these acronyms that like sure. oh, you know base, basal me- metabolic rate. Like I, I need to find out mine, and then I'm going to do this. It's like yeah. well, I mean to be honest with you, I don't know if I've ever even used that no. as a, as a tool. It's a moving people. target anyway. Change. That's what frustrating I frustrating because people hang on those numbers like right. it's like like super accurate. And I mean that's really why we pulled a lot of the calculators out of like our our nutrition guide because it's like it, it's so subjective. It's not like you can't pinpoint it like that. Like it, you have to go through that process of like a couple weeks of, of understanding your body on that level and like what you're putting in what what your your daily habits consist of movement wise and then like figure that out to where like have i been gaining have i been losing like all that stuff it takes there's time. so many variables and then we didn't even talk about like inflammation or gut issues or other things that people could have so you could be totally hitting where you should be calorie wise movement wise think you're right on target for your bmr but then you have like some sort of a food allergy that mm-hmm. you're dealing with uh, yeah. and so then your body's retaining and Fuck. holding more water because of the so there's so many 
many variables. So to get hung up on your BMR because you took some test and they said, oh yeah, you, your BMR is you know 1,900 calories. So you're like, oh cool. So I actually just had somebody DM me this exact question. She was asking that. Uh, she said, oh my BMR is 1,300. So you know, would you suggest staying at that and trying to lose weight through exercise and and cardio, or should I try to you know reverse diet or try to increase my metabolism? And I directed her to the why cardio sucks YouTube video you did. And then also the Lane Norton episode, because I thought we kind of touched on both the, those topics mm-hmm. in that. But, you know, I this is an area where, like the Fitbit too, I think when people use these fit the tool and they get caught up on the, oh, it says I burned this much. It's like, that's where yeah. these things are really not useful is when you get hung up on the specific- They don't know. Yeah. yeah. They have no idea. I used or to hate it's that. It's not like pinpointed and accurate. No, Which, I used to hate but that. But that one. being said, I also want to defend it in the fact that that doesn't mean it's worthless. No. It doesn't mean that because we're, we're saying that, oh, don't get hung up that it says you're burning 2,500 calories. It could be totally wrong. Well, it could be. But what they're good at is that they're good at reading consistently, right? That's it. So like so you can see if it's up or down. Right. That's it. So use it more like that yeah. versus oh my body is this calorie amount. No, that's not may not necessarily be true. No, it's like the cardio machines. I used to hate this yeah. when I would get clients who would, you know, hire me as a trainer or whatever. They'd be like, "Oh, I burn Yeah, I burn 1200 calories every day on cardio." I'm like, "Oh, you do." So you do like two and a half hours of cardio. Dude, remember? Oh no, it says 45 minutes on the elliptical, 1200 calories. Remember when we got the body bug and then we had the same clients go through and test each one of those cardio pieces of equipment and oh, yeah. it was always like I at this. least 4 to 500 calories burned more than what it what <laughs> they were actually burning based off of like the the more sophisticated sensors Dude, the they had. The first week that body bug came out, I was one of the test FMs again. This was way back when, right? It was 12, 15 years ago. Right. And I was so excited about it. And because they were they were promoting how it's 94% accurate, right? Mm-hmm. As far as the calories burnt. So for a week, I consistently got up at six o'clock in the morning, didn't eat, went straight to the gym, and I and I went for an hour as hard as I could on a piece of a cardio equipment and I rotated all the equipment to to, to measure what the equipment was saying and then measure mm-hmm. what my body bug was mm-hmm. saying. And dude, some of them were like way off like, i'd way get the fuck like off. my my body bug would read that i was like 350 to 400 calories yeah, burned, you're a big dude and the stairmaster would say a thousand mm. calories when i'm like yeah Whoa, dude. yeah you know do you know why they, they wanted that? you to feel good yeah it, it, you be, know as you're doing it it's <laughs> like a, you're doing something it's a fucking racket do you know yeah. why they do that right first of all nobody checks nobody knows nobody cares right i mean people care but nobody checks the reason why cardio machines do that in the first place is because they know if it says tells you a higher number it's selling itself to be used. Yes. And I know this because members would literally tell me, well, I, they, I want to use that one because I burn more calories they on use, that one. They use actually, they so actually- Infomercials still fucking put that out. Like they that. actually use like an, uh, a specific algorithm, like all of them. It's based off of, and I don't, I remember reading this a long time ago, and it's like a athletic, you know, 30-year-old male, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's like, like, like that has X is, amount of lean body mass on them or whatever. Already like has an awesome metabolism. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's what they use. So yeah. they use somebody who's got like this roaring metabolism mm-hmm. that's a male, has a lot of muscle on, on their body. So it's uh-huh. like- And here's the other thing you yeah, want to keep in worthless. mind too with, with your BMR is, you know, I could, if I could figure out my BMR right now exactly- that I could change that number within a few days of activity and and nutrition or stress so, or stress right. or whatever. Right. I mean, like you said, lack of sleep. Stress. Like you said, food intolerance, right? Well, how can that change your BMR? Well, a food intolerance is cause cause a systemic kind of inflammatory response in the body. How does the body respond when that happens? Well, you release cortisol, your liver dumps glycogen. This is why people can get a spike in blood sugar after eating foods with no carbohydrates if they have like a, a food intolerance or strong intolerance to them. All these things can affect your BMR, and so it becomes not that important. It really so, starts to become not that yeah. important. So Getting then it goes. It important. goes back to because when you look at it, there's, I mean, there's a bajillion ways now to test for this, and all of them are probably within a few percent of each other. So it, it doesn't matter which one's more accurate to your actual BMR. They all will work to give you a a baseline or a, a starting point. Just always use that the same exact way you right. applied it. Anytime. That's it. That's, that's how I would I would coach them. Just like I coach them on using body fat percentage. Same exact thing too. It's like we can sit here and debate all day long if the DEXA scan or the right. you know dunk right. tank or the skin fold, which one's more accurate, which ones. But they all have room for error. Yeah. They're all within a few percent of what they they claim to be accurate. Doesn't fucking matter. What matters is where you start. Whatever you go and apply and do from there. Then you and then, know what direction you're right, going. Right, and then you retest again and you use it like that. That's it. 
Next question is from Ryan Alduenda. Your thoughts on walking after eating. You spoke about waiting before you consume food after working out because you want to be in a parasympathetic state to digest food. But you also spoke about the benefits of walking after eating and aiding digestion. But wouldn't walking after you eat take you out of a parasympathetic state? No. Depends how you walk. <laughs> yeah. you know? um, walking can be very meditative and Appreciate relaxing. It. The idea of walking post-meal is not to go for a workout. That would probably not be a good idea immediately afterwards. You could wait an hour or two and then do it like if you want to go for a run and stuff like that. But right after you work out, if you look at the cultures that value a stroll post-meal, um, uh, many Asian cultures do this, Mediterranean cultures do this. I know, in, you know when I go visit family in Sicily, that tends to be something that we do after we eat. It is not a fast walk. We are literally strolling, having nice conversation. The idea is for, it, it's a relaxing movement. And so it is very parasympathetic. Now we can say that sleep is also parasympathetic, but I'll make the argument that laying horizontally um, and not moving is probably worse for digestion. No, -eating. I think about it for gravity. Gravity is going right. to help that process alone. That's just, right. just standing up is mm -hmm. a big deal. And you know, you, it's funny. If you look at the anatomy of the muscles that are involved when you walk, in particular, some of the hip flexors like the psoas, the psoas kind of goes through the body and is around your digestive organs. And many times moving the psoas muscles does help the digestive yeah. process Allows things to kind of travel in fact you know when you have if you have um one of the tests that they do for appendicitis is what's called a psoas test and what they'll do is they'll have you activate your psoas and if you feel pain right away because the psoas is literally right there that happens to be one of the ways that they can identify whether or not you have an inflamed you know appendix but it's it's very it definitely does help with the digestive process but it is not a fast it's not yeah. a fast walk you're going very slow Well, not to mention too like normally when you're eating out or eating there's this before you, it's not like you you ate and then you go go right away to like this power walk it's like you eat the bill comes you're probably talking exactly. you know what i'm saying so it's not and it's not supposed to be like this rigorous exercise we're not power walking when katrina and i do it it's a very very slow casual stroll mm -hmm. it's not it's not designed to get my heart it's rate like up blood well. flow yeah you're just trying to just casually go through it so that everything can kind of start its natural process of moving mm -hmm. down i mean yeah it has a lot of <laughs> movement has to occur to be able to get it through everything that's in your right. small intestine and in sympathetic and parasympathetic and i'm going to make a statement that might be a little controversial but it has more to do with your state of mind than it does than your necessarily what your activity is like so i'll, I'll give you an example if we took a you know world champion marathon runner and we had him go on a run you know outside in a relaxing run in nature that could be very meditative for that individual. I could see somebody who's very out of shape pushing themselves uh, could cause a sympathetic state, but here's another example. I know when I used to train clients, so when I would train you know, between six to ten people in a day, and this is back when I used to eat how do they how do they define it right now? Is it by heart rate? It's uh, it's it's. This has to do with your central nervous system. So they don't. So they don't define it by heart rate. Not necessarily. Well, I mean, heart rate's part of it. Yes, heart rate can be a part of it, but it has to do with your neurotransmitter production. It has to do with your catecholamines, your hormones. What you're all. For think example, for example, you could be sitting down right now, and a fucking spider the size of this table could come out of the ceiling. And for sure, without moving, you'd go sympathetic real fast. You scared the shit out of me. Yeah, you'd be... <laughs> exactly. I fucking hate That's like yeah. my worst nightmare. Spy oh, my yeah. God. But like when I used to train clients back in the day, I'd have like you know eight people in a day, and I would also eat six to eight times a day. And I remember this was a very terrible way of eating. Client would leave. I'd have five minutes to eat a full meal before my next client. So I'd sit there standing at my desk, and I'd fucking chow it down for sure a sympathetic state of eating. I wasn't running. I wasn't moving. I was standing there with my ass cheeks clenched because I'm fucking going real quick trying to eat this food real fast before my next client comes in. That is a sympathetic state to be in. Um, and then we meet with people like Paul Check, who talks about prayer before food or mindfulness. And you can see the state that he places his body in when he eats. Uh, uh, what's his name? Talked about this also. Uh, uh, what's his name? Pakulski mm. talked about this as well. You know, about the state of mind, you go into your food and out of your food. And then again, meeting with Tom and Lisa Bilyeu, and you know, Lisa Bilyeu has, has had some gut issues. And the expert that she's working with told her, meditate before you eat and after you eat. Now we're talking about somebody with really, really bad gut issues.
But that change in state of mind has made a tremendous, she says, tremendous benefit in how Mm -hmm. she digests food. So walk, it's how you walk. You know what I mean? Like, Adam, when you go for a walk post meal, what do you, you're taking your dogs, go barefoot. I'm assuming it's just really relaxing. Oh, yeah. It's extremely relaxing and slow. Yeah. Yeah. It's not strenuous at all. No, 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 no. And that's the same thing. That's the way my family does it. Like after we eat, especially if we have a big family dinner and my dad wants to go on a walk. We walk, we have good conversation. It's, uh, you know, it's relaxing. And, and there's something that uh, Jessica practices, which is called, uh, she calls it meditative walking or slow walking, where she, I mean, if you were to see her walking, it would look absurdly slow. But literally what she's doing is she's focusing on every point of contact on her foot as she's stepping and being extremely mindful of every single step. And that is a very, very parasympathetic state. Uh, but walking post food, one of the other reasons why I like it so much, and we mentioned this earlier in the episode, is when you attach activity to a ritual that you do every single day, you tend to be more consistent with it. Mm-hmm. This is why people, when they work out in the morning, people who work out in the morning tend to be more consistent than people who work out uh, in the evening after work. Mm-hmm. And I think it has to do with the fact that when you wake up in the morning, it's part of your ritual. You do it before anything gets in the way. Whereas when you wait till the end of work, you know, that workout could be pushed out, you know, one or two or three hours, depending on what's happening during the day, becomes less ritualized and becomes something that you can oh, the best push out. Success I've had, especially with clients with prime, um, and, and pinpointing like where like what we could do in order to improve a lot of these deficiencies was to just apply that sequence. So whether it's band pull aparts, whether it's like, you know, hip flexor uh, based, you know, mobility and like um, they would do that first thing. Like after they, they woke up in the morning and then they kind of went through this ritual, then set themselves up for the day. And then the rest of the day is like activity. And then they keep hitting on those points throughout the day. But it's, it's like you said, it, it's, it's getting consistency by ritualizing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And look, I mean, Test this out yourself. If you ever have like, you know, sharp gas pains post meal or you feel bloated, try it out. Go for a 20 minute slow stroll and watch, watch what happens. First of all, if you have gas pains, the movement will help facilitate the movement. Blow it out. Yeah, you'll yeah. actually, yeah. I mean, you'll Let find, out, man. you'll find yourself, you know, letting the gas out or whatever and, yeah. and feeling a lot better. <laughs> it's definitely makes a huge difference. It's something that I've been doing since I was a kid and I, I kind of took for granted until you know you brought it up, Adam, and, and now it's a it's a part of your daily, I guess, ritual. Do you do it after just dinner? I do, I try and do it after any meal that I can. Like, but for sure after we have dinner, for sure after we have dinner, it's it's a and definitely when we eat out. So like, if we ever get lazy on it, it might be after you know a late night dinner or a late meal for us at our house. But if Katrina and I are eating out, it's a it's mandatory for us. It's, and it's just, I mean, it's easy too. Well, it, I I feel like too, I'm I'm killing two birds, maybe three birds with one stone by by doing this because it's also created an incredible time for her and I. It's great quality time. I mean, there's no distractions. Like we don't bring our phones. You know what I'm saying? So we're not walking together and working on our phones or anything like that. So it's just her and I walking out in nature and just kind of conversing. And and it's crazy to me because it, there's a very uh, distinct switch from one side to the other like the first like i don't know quarter mile of walking is kind of like settling down completely Mm -hmm. and then once once we've walked about a quarter mile you can hear the conversation you can tell the way we're moving and talking back and forth it becomes very relaxing for us but it's something that i've i've found has been really important not just for my digestion and some of that which is what we're talking about right now but even for my relationship and even if you don't have a partner I, I've learned to start practicing this process. today. I was obviously all by myself. I got up, I had a cup of coffee, some breakfast, and then I went on a, a really long walk for about three, four miles. And it was all by myself, and I had my headphones in. I was oh, listening yeah. to something relaxing. Anything you could do where you're not just plopping in front of the TV and yeah. like being you know mindless and not talking to your partner. It's like it's going to benefit you know your relationship and, and the rest of your day. So as, as much as I can practice that, whether it's walking or just like you know doing stuff around the house or it's, whatever, it's so crazy to me because I used to knock it when I was a, a young trainer. It's yeah. I, I feel so bad too because I'd have clients say, "Oh, well, I go for a walk," and I'd be like. Pfft. You're not doing anything. Yeah, exactly. We're not burning very much doing that. But getting older now and seeing, seeing the other value besides just calories. Like, a, sure, when you go for a, like the, the three mile walk that I took this morning, yeah, I didn't burn 500 plus calories doing it. Like, but the other benefits that come with that, I think 
sometimes I think can supersede the the calorie expenditure that most people are chasing. There, if you just go by calories being burned, you're missing out on right. you know eighty percent of the other benefits. It's also a fantastic practice to do if you have kids. Mm-hmm. Now I have yet to really implement this with my kids, but now that we're talking about this, this is just it's extending the family time. You know, take fifteen minutes. And also, because it's ritualized, I feel like if you connect it to the post-meal, like this is what we do after we eat dinner, I feel like the kids will just do it automatically with us or not complain about it because it's not out of the blue. Mm. It's like, this is what we do after we eat. We all go for a walk. And you're absolutely right. It's the, the conversation is f- fantastic. You know, there's we, we talked in that episode. This is why the Ben Greenfield episode we did was one of my favorite episodes. And, and we should probably revisit this type of a conversation more often. And I'm trying to get in the habit of paying more attention so I can then give this information to our audience because really a lot of the the success that I've had later on in life is is creating these little tiny rituals. For example, what comes to mind too is, you know, it's important for me to spend, I don't have kids, right? So my kids are like my dog. So spending time with my boys and playing with the dogs and giving them attention, just because just like kids, if you neglect the dogs and I don't ever walk them, I don't ever spend time with them, then they chew shit, they're bad. They behave well when I, when I spend time with them. Right. So, you know, and then over the last year and a half, two years, uh, my mobility has been a major thing that I've been working on. And, you know, when I first would spend time with the dogs, I'd have to sit down on the couch or lay down on the ground and play with them so that where now I can sit in a very comfortable ass to grass squat. And so I intentionally will do that. So I'll walk up to them, get all the way down into my squat. I'll open my hips up. I'll posture kind of up and then I'll play with them and stuff and just creating those those types of habits it's i'm not really having to even exercise that hard but i'm also training my body to be comfortable yep. yeah. in that position and i've seen it now pay dividends in my training yep. absolutely it's interesting because this year was a big thing a shift you know i was trying to like you know figure out like what was really causing this chronic like inflammation as far as acid reflux and all that and get a handle over that but also it was just like trying to contribute a bit more you know around the house and all that and so i just like just I didn't like make it a firm thing for me, but I just started to notice that I would do this. And then I just tried to replicate this as much as possible where I, I wouldn't sit down until like eight thirty nine 9 o'clock after I put the boys to sleep. And it was like game changer. Cause like if, if I'm coming in the house and then I'm just like, Oh, and then the sit down, good luck. Right, like getting me back in momentum to right. keep, to keep going. It's not that I was in a state of stress or anything. Like I just would, you know, just casually kind of cruise around and, you know, talk and converse. And then, and then just, you know, inevitably you're, you're, you're doing things, you're, Mm -hmm. you're putting things away. Like, you know, you're just more productive. Like the household is, is more in a state of chill. And, uh, that was like a huge thing. And then put my phone, like we talked about that, like I, I would, I would go put it on, you know, the charger, you know, and then revisit it. Like, you know, just to see what was going on. But yeah, that, those, those two things alone were huge. No, rich, ritualizing things is, ex- this is, look at humans have been ritualizing things forever. There's a reason why a ritual exists in the first place. And we take for granted why we have rituals and we make fun of them. But the reason why they exist in the first place is that it is a very simple, easy way in a very brilliant way that our brains put things in categories and help us remember them. When you wake up in the morning, I guarantee you have a morning ritual. Everybody does. You brush your teeth, the same way or at the same time, it, in either before or after you go to the bathroom and you shower a particular way and you, you put your shoes on a particular way. and every We tend to do these things and we take them for granted. And if you throw something in right. into a ritual that you already have established, the likelihood that you'll do it more consistently is much higher. If I say I need to walk three times a day and that's that, much more difficult than if I attach that walk to my workout. The supplement industry is was brilliant in, in designing some of their pre supplements. Workout. Pre workout. Pre post workout. They yeah. they were brilliant in that because they ritualized taking supplements because it's a ritual around your workout that you're not going to miss because right. obviously you're into working out. Right. So it's just it's just a, a fantastic technique and eating is it, I can't think of something people don't do more consistently than eating every day, right? That's the most consistent thing we do. Which is also why I think that's one of the most important times to make a ritual of moving. Exactly. Right? Because around that because we do tend to eat more than we need as as a society. So creating a ritual around that that mm-hmm. habit with a good habit yeah. I think Pizza is really Pizza and football is not a good ritual. <laughs> you know what I mean? And who did the right? Look at all the advertisers yeah, and shit Domino's that have created. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Look at TV they dinners. They got me. TV dinners, by the way, brilliant. You know, before that, people didn't really sit down. It wasn't that big thing to sit down in front of TV. 
It was the food manufacturers that are like, hey, this is a great way to eat. Sit in front of the TV, eat your food. And now that's what everybody You does. know what? I wonder how many Hungry families. Man. It'd be interesting to see how many of our listeners. I love a thread on our forum to get going on this of how many people actually sit down and do family dinners. Or a, is it mm. really common in, in households now that just, you know, grab your plate and sit turn in front of the TV? Of, on yeah, turn your TV or your phone. Or did this. you guys have. I had. We had every night family dinners. I did have family oh, yeah. dinners. That oh, was yeah, something yeah, that yeah. my parents did. That was a big it's deal. It's such a good thing. Yeah, that yeah. was a big deal that we had family dinners together. So, but I, I know a lot of people that don't. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Next question is from Misfit Nerdy. What is something you've said on the podcast before that you have since learned is not true or has been disproven? Oh, wow. I can think of two off the top of my head. Really? Oh, right away, huh? Yeah, right away. One is uh, pre-workout supplements. So when we when we first started Mind Pump, we mm. we railed against uh, supplements and uh, most supplements and pre-workouts in particular, but. We gave people a recipe mm-hmm. to create their own pre-workout, and, and and some of the stuff that you know I had put in there was like branched chain amino acids, glutamine, um, arginine, citrulline, um, and then you know caffeine and, and beta alanine and stuff like that. And I said, here, mix it yourself, buy the powders yourself, and then you have yourself a good pre-workout. Since then, really, there's only maybe two things that really may benefit you pre-workout and that's a stimulant of some sort like caffeine and really it's about the performance that you're putting in in your workout so are the long-term benefits if it helps you work out better or whatever yes in some cases it may not benefit you uh beta alanine in the case of uh, stamina can help people out that's actually been proven but you know bcaa's and glutamine and stuff like that mm, not going to do anything for you really if you get enough protein it's not going to help you out at all. And we actually took that off our site. I think we had that, that recipe on there yeah, for a while. we had that for a while, for And we sure. took that down, yeah. The other one I can think about is how we talked about foam rolling. That, yeah, that, that, that was one. the first one that stuck out. And I think it it was after like we had actually like dove into Dr. Spina and like his explanation of like how that all all worked. And so that was interesting because not only that, but then like after that, we, we realized like how different it was for, for how we were explaining it mm-hmm. um, about myofascial release and like how Which well, is not that's a good not term. really happening. Yeah. yeah. In that process, that's what led us to create prime after that too. Like it, we figured out like the central nervous system and how that plays a role. Exactly. Cause I used to think of, and I remember thinking of it this way because a massage therapist explained it to me this way. And I thought it was, I thought this was, Oh, that kind of makes sense. And this is the way I used to explain it. And I was totally wrong. But if you look at muscle fibers, uh, if you look at a picture of anatomy, look at muscle fibers, they, they all run parallel to each other, right? And they go from attachment to attachment. So it's like like a bunch of lines running parallel. And the way that I, was explained to me was that sometimes these fibers get entangled and bundled around each other, and you have to press on them to get them, you know, d- distangled or whatever, or, or you know, kind of get them to straighten out a little bit. Oh, see, like I was I was always taught it was like adhesions that that w- would would mm-hmm. build up like scar tissue the opposite direction the fibers would run. Right, and that, also that was wrong. Breaking it up. Yeah, right? also yeah. wrong. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, really, what we what I what we learned as we did the podcast, and we learned this pretty quickly. It was like six months into the podcasting, was that no, no, no. When you apply pressure, it's all central nervous system. It has nothing to do with the muscle fibers getting jumbled or any of that shit or adhesions building. It's literally telling the central nervous system to relax, and then those muscle, muscle fibers relax, and that's pretty much it. So yeah. on that note, something else that that reminds me of that we said that was wrong or that we clowned on that later on that we saw value in were the vibrating plates. Yes, mm. that was a big one. That's Along right. the same exact line of that, we were talking a lot of shit about the vibrating plates when they first come out, but when we found out more of the, the science behind it that supports and what it does as far as re- relaxing the central nervous system through the vibrations to mm. allows you to take... Like somebody into a deep squat. Well, you could feel it too. Oh, you. Oh, it, I mean, I remember we just we, didn't really know how to explain it, and right. I think that it was very gimmicky. You know, the way that like, oh, I just do a squat on this, or oh, I do a lunge on it, but like they didn't really get into the purpose of it, and so we dove into that and was like, oh, yeah, there's some value. To it, this. What it does, it, because we made fun of it, and we said, oh, it's stupid, just squat and regular surface, this, that, and the other. And then uh, I got a membership at Club Sport, or we were all going there, and they had one of those vibrating plates. And I was sitting on it or standing on it and doing a squat and turning it on and just messing with it. And I realized that I could get much deeper. And then I thought about it for a second. Like, you know, the, the powerful vibrations are literally tricking my CNS into relaxing. It's almost like like any time anytime you use vibration in your body, that's what it does. Is it sends that signal to the CNS. I think this is how vibrators work even when, yeah. when women use vibrators. 
And uh, it, that's why it can cause those kinds of reactions. And so it's just telling the CNS to kind of relax because of the powerful you know, vibration. Then you get a greater range of motion. And uh, yeah, so we had to take it back. Bigger orgasm. Yes. Yeah. So we had to kind of <laughs> we important. had to kind of take it back. You know what we said originally about that. Right. So I remember that one. I'm trying to think what else that I remember that would, that's been disproven. Oh, electronical. I mean, I thought that was a word. <laughs> <laughs> that got disproven. Yeah. Although I'm still There's time. I'm no, still we're... fighting for that though. I really am. Like Sal just used technologies, and I feel like electronicals would have been better to use there. We're developing your own glossary. Yeah. Adam. <laughs> we're just gonna list all these, and it's gonna yes. become your own. Right. If you count all the <laughs> library of of words. <laughs> yeah. If you count all the words I've made up on this show, then there's a lot of things that have been disproven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I'm trying to remember what else that we were. Well, pretty... you know, along the way, you know, it's funny. Along the we, way, we correct it right away though. That's the, the reason why I think I don't rem- I know we've had a, a lot more than just that for but, sure but I, what we do and what we I, we've always promised to do on this show is that if there's anything that we ever talk about that we're disproven about we'll immediately come out and and call it out right away so I don't think mm-hmm. there's to I, th- I think there's been a lot of things that just don't stand out because we make mistakes all the time mm-hmm. you know we yeah. say something and it's like oh shit you know what I read something that's actually not true it's more like this and then we explain or we get people I mean now we have a forum that's full of fucking people way smarter than all of us and they are real quick to let us know <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying yeah. we say something on the show and then we, we get on our forum or we get DMs yeah, it's oh, mainly details oh, like facts for yeah. things and it's just like oh yeah I totally fucked up oh, I got my one, bad I got one where I was really wrong when we were talking about childbirth and I was talking about how dangerous uh, childbirth war it was for most of human civilization, how lots of women died from it. How it was mm. this. Now, the potential for childbirth is dangerous for sure, but it's not nearly as dangerous as I thought it was. The reason why we have such a bad history of it in Western medicine is in re- the way we would, we would do childbirth. It was filthy. We'd have women on their backs, and we'd treat it as a medical emergency. And I watched this whole documentary on natural childbirth and how different the process was when it was done with like a midwife who understood the natural process. And so I did some deeper digging. And then we had someone on the forum who was a midwife and she corrected me. She's like, no, you're wrong, Sal. So I went back and apologized to her and she was absolutely right. But I remember that because that was a mind-blowing one for me. Hmm. And then I think I said something recently about Australia not uh, not oh, helping right. World War One or World War Two. That was wrong too. Yeah, you guys are. <laughs> there we go. You guys helped us, helped out quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own on that yeah, one, Yeah, buddy. you know yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> Next question is from Michael Salzel. As the masculine men you guys are, how would you approach trying yeah. to raise an LGBT son or daughter? Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. This is what a controversial, interesting great, question. thought-provoking question. You know, right there. You know it's funny. It's, I'd, lie, I'd be lying if I said I never thought about it. I mean, I think, every, I think everybody course. has thought about it. Of course. You know why I've thought about this? For, here, here's the deal for me, okay? If, if my kid is, is a good person, I don't care. I really don't. I don't give a shit. If you're a good person... It's not that big. Now, the part that I do care about is, is this going to pose different challenges for you Hmm. in society and in life? And thankfully, these days, it's less and less of an issue. And so that may be the thing that would change my approach. I may say things like, okay, look, you know, uh, people may judge you or you may be in a situation where um, somebody may look at you differently as a result. And so I may, you know, I may talk to them about that type of stuff. But if my kid was, you know, fulfilled and happy, like, and you know, I know this is as a masculine men you are, you know, masculinity isn't about being macho and about liking women. Masculinity for me, at least, is just about taking responsibility, protecting your family, um, you know, and having integrity. But I don't even know if that's necessarily masculine well, as much as I that's, think. I uh, think I think you could consider us. Ma- I'm not. I don't think we're macho men. You know, I think yeah. we're masculine men. Yeah. I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with being a masculine man. I think no, it's just. A, I, I think it's a healthy, good thing. The, <laughs> I'm, the I'm word not trying been, not to be. The word has been perverted a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, it to, has. Mean, to mean something totally. Well, different. Now it's like toxic. You know, it's like, unfortunate that that, that, that it's toxic. It shouldn't be toxic. I don't think so there's, at all. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I think macho men is a little bit different. If you think. I think if you have that, if you attach yourself to it, and it, this wouldn't bother me. Like, I've thought about this. Uh, for me, uh, if and when I have kids, or when and if I have kids, uh, if they're healthy, like, that's to me. That, my biggest fear is that, is if I had yeah. if I had a child that was 
disabled or special needs. Which is already defined the odds because of like how many like variables are out there. Like when your kid is like being brought up, like you never know, like what the genetic hand is, is giving and passing on and like right. we're going to have to battle. So obviously that's priority one. Right. So for me, if, I mean, having a healthy child is, would hundred percent be the, the number one concern that I would have or the, the biggest thing that would scare me or worry me like, Oh my God. Cause that, I don't know if I'd be ready for that. Like that. I mean, I know I would because I would do whatever it takes. But that would be really, really tough. This is a tough question because, I mean, my first reaction is I wouldn't treat them any differently than I would, you know, like like whether or not they're straight or, or, or like, you know, like just male, female, like it, it they're a person, you know, they're a person. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to try and instill as many like good values in them as I can and in morality and like like thinking about other people and, um, you know, those type of values and carrying that on. But, uh, yeah, it's like. What are you going to do? Like, as a parent, you you understand how little you actually control, and mm-hmm. that's that's the biggest lesson I think that uh, you know parenting has taught me so far is like as much as I feel like I'm steering, uh, you get humbled, mm-hmm. you know, the entire way through, and and it's just like wow, I can I I just try and like plant seeds, plant seeds, plant seeds as much as I can, but you know to to be to have an opinion like I'm gonna. I'm going to change this and I'm going to make them this way and all this like good fucking luck with that. I, idea. Well, do you, do you, what do you, I'm curious to what you both believe. Do you believe that it's a hundred percent genetic or do you think social also plays a role? In oh, this? both, uh, yeah. both, it, but Na- it doesn't matter. Nurture. Yeah, it's, but it's it, all together, but it doesn't matter. That's always a question, right? Uh, that's like the thing like, Oh, it doesn't matter. I was born this way. I don't have a choice. If you do have a choice, it shouldn't matter anyway. If you're an adult, you're not hurting anybody. That's fine. And look, here's my evidence for it, it being also a choice. There's definitely a genetic component. We can see this with twin studies. So we find that when there's twins, uh, identical twins, if one of them is gay, then the likelihood that the other one will be gay is much, much, much higher. So there's definitely a genetic component. But there's also a, a, a choice component. I mean, people do you know, homosexual things in situations that where they're normally, you know, straight people do homosexual things in different situations all the time. Girls may do this to get sometimes attention at bars, men in prison may do this or at war may do this. Um, you know, depending on the culture, it's been accepted in, in all their other cultures. You know, ancient Greek societies had were very, you know, had, did lots of things that were accepted. So I, I definitely so, think there's it's both. But the way I raise my kids is to have good character, integrity, and to respect themselves. And that's pretty much it. So mm-hmm. if, well, if staying, you're, staying along those lines, though, I'm going to I want to keep challenging you guys since you're the two that have kids. I don't have kids. And so I'm curious to, you know, if you like Justin with your boys. Well, I guess this wouldn't happen because you have two boys. so You probably don't have Barbies laying around anywhere. But if you had a your your boy was gravitating towards like f- f- feminine toys. Right. Mm-hmm. So like dolls, things like that, wanting to dress up. As that, right. Would you encourage him to play play with trucks and be, do guns and things like that at, at that at an age or and mm. Sal, you have a male and a female. So yeah. I'm curious if you ever saw any behaviors like this where your son gravitated to more, you know, feminine type of things of play and then you're in your Well, to be, I mean, let's be like radically honest about this. Like I honestly like I would start with the guns and the, you know, the tanks and the fucking, you know, the because that's where I'm coming from. You know, but like it's because what you like to play. It's with. what I like to play. Yeah. And then, so I would I would start with that and then kind of see what happened. Like, you know, it, it would be something that would re- reveal itself, I would think. Right. You know, down the road. Um, but like, as far as raising them, like in them being, you know, a a male and I'm a male, like I'm going to raise them like the way that I kind of came up. And so it's just natural for me to like, okay, I, I was into this. Let's see if they're into this, you know? And, and if they're not, then here's where we start figuring out. I think people put, first of all, statistically speaking, this is a, this is established, uh, in psychology and they've done studies for this for decades. So this is not controversial to say. But boys tend to be more into things, and girls tend to be more into people. So girls tend to want to play with dolls, and they want to talk to each other. Boys like to play with trucks and guns and shit like that. This has just been established. Can you separate the the you know society from that and the genetics from that? They've tried, and it seems like it, there's a big genetic component. And evolutionary speaking, we can make an argument for it. But at the end of the day, I just don't make a big deal about well, it. So like, I, you know what I mean? Like know, if my think- kid wants to play with Barbies. 
then that's what we're playing with. Well, that's you know so, what I'm saying. I guess my question is then: neither of you have had to deal with this yet, where your sons have gravitated towards something that's more feminine, and you've been in more encouraging to go the other direction, or vice mm. versa. You guys well, haven't had to deal. with I that tend either. to encourage things that I want to play with. You know what I'm saying? Only yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's what I like to do, but right. not because I think no. That I get they what you guys are doing, yeah. but so no one's dealt with that yet. Well, so no I one's. Know. So uh, even me growing up, like I was always trying to crack jokes and like make like do things that were silly and whatnot. And so like I had my best friend was a girl. And so like we would actually wear wigs and shit and like, you know, like like pretend to like be characters and stuff. And so if, I, if my dad saw that, you know, maybe that freaked him out for a minute. You know, yeah. maybe he was like, oh, wow. But like to me, it's like I, like my youngest is very much like me. Like he'll just goof. And so he'll put something on. And like act and prance around like he's, you know, like a little bit feminine and whatnot. And I think it's hilarious, you right. know. And so it's to me, it's it's just harmless. They're just kind of figuring things out. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, man, like I don't freak out, you know, or like like have this like, oh, he has to be super macho and masculine and like uh, you know, whatever. He's gonna be who he's gonna be. Yep. Um, and I I I'm into what I'm into, so I'm not gonna like go you know, buy a bunch of Barbies and shit and be like, you know, let's yeah, do this. I just, now, I just, I, now I know some parents that do things like that, right? Where, course, they, where they yeah, try yeah. and make it like so a social experiment, right? So neutral yeah. and they, and they will put, but they're making a big deal about it. Right. Yeah, that, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's political at that point. It's no different than making a big deal about having to be masculine or having to be feminine. That also is making a big deal. Oh no, everything is super neutral. Right, we don't right. use, you know, uh, we don't say these are boy toys. We just, just don't make a fucking big deal about it and let your kid, do their thing and that's kind of it and i mean at the end of the day i just don't want to raise weak kids i just don't want my mm-hmm. kids to be weak mm-hmm. i want them to have strong character yeah if that means you're a gay boy or a lesbian girl you're still gonna have fucking strong character you're still gonna respect yourself you're still not gonna be promiscuous because you you know feel like you need to have people's attention if you're a promiscuous person because you really like sex and you're really confident in yourself and in your body then that's fine too but th- these are all lessons that i would instill in my kids regardless of what or who you know they're attracted to it really to me it doesn't make it it doesn't make a big difference and i think we'd have less issues as a result but what i think is going to happen moving forward look it's we went through the generation where it became kind of cool for girls to show uh to show like affection uh, to show attention to other girls in bars and shit because that kind of started when we were growing up like oh, before yeah. that, the girls were yeah, stuff. girls weren't making out with each other to get attention. Then it started happening. It started seeing, you know, it's gonna. I guarantee it's gonna start happening soon. You're gonna start seeing guys do this. I guarantee you, it's gonna start being cool for people. And you know what? Whatever. You guys want to kiss each other because you're getting attention. That's fine. <laughs> Like do your thing, but I, I guarantee like that's gonna happen. I feel like really he's setting the happen? table to lay one on us, dude. I <laughs> no, feel like no, no. I feel like, like look, it's cool now, yeah, it's, guys. It's totally yeah, normal. Yeah, it's, it's totally normal. okay. It's totally okay. <laughs> don't I'm think I'm not gonna put my tongue in there. I'm gonna Come stop on. drinking around. Let yeah, me ask, dude. I don't know, dude. Oh, I feel oh, like you're I setting did. Justin yeah. and I up right now. Let me ask you guys a question. Oh look, this house only has three bedrooms. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you think for if that was something, if that was a way for guys to really get female attention and get girls, do you think you'd see guys doing that? Well, that's natural. Course, that's dude. evolution because you're yeah. trying to reproduce, that's right? right? That's so right. of course, if yeah. that was the case. But anyway, my point is like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter whatsoever. It's about having strong character. It's about having responsibility, um, and it's about being having good integrity. At Just the, don't try and kiss me after them sardines, yeah. bro. Yeah. At least, get, at least give it to me before that. Before, Here. before the sardines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God. I don't like your mustache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got whiskers on your face. Just, just would be a way Justin's better person. I'm gonna start growing. No, I'm growing a beard. He definitely would make out. No, no, no. I don't know, man. You're way more. I'm kind of sloppy. Dude. You were talking about my golden sheen the other day on my skin. <laughs> it was making me real uncomfortable. It was pretty like magnificent. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I appreciate I it. Yeah, you can check it I out. I had on to Instagram. comment. Yeah. yeah. So check this out. We also have free guides uh, that we've created. They're very valuable. They talk about ways of training. They talk about nutrition, speeding up metabolism, stuff like that. There's I don't know how many guides do we have on there, like uh, seven clo- or eight. No, we're closer to twelve. There's, Are we really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a flat tummy. There's flabby arms. There's building your legs, your chest, your calves. There's a few other ones. Hit all kinds That's of stuff. That's it. Yeah. So you can find all of these free guides uh, at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. 
The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.